Ladies and gentlemen. So, oh, we going now? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> we going now. <laughs> I'm getting phone calls and everything's going crazy, but luckily I, I caught that because if not, that would have been a fucking hour podcast, but I record. A little repeat of last time. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> How many times is that? <laughs> uh, just been- once real bad. We lost like half an hour or something, 20, 30 minutes. That, that was pretty bad. That was pretty bad. Shit, this is this is 16 weeks out. Imagine when I'm six weeks out. It's gonna be mm. you got you got you got you all gotta stay on top of me. Hey, did you put did you hit record? Hey, did you <laughs> it'll be a miracle if any of these go up by then? Oh man. We we're gonna keep it going, but if it goes to complete shit, we're gonna just sit here and look at each other for fucking an hour if we have to. <laughs> I don't care. I'm not stopping this shit, man. I'm gonna keep it fucking this. I'm gonna keep it going. That's how attitude, do, uh, man. That, dude, do, honestly, I just want to say, like, that's a good thing because with our with our podcast, like, we fucked up, man. And even with my YouTube channel, I fucked up because I was consistent for a while and then fell off. Then you come back and you know what? Too fucking bad, right? You got to be consistent. Same thing with bodybuilding, right? That's yeah. simple. I mean, yeah. it's really that simple. It, it's, it's a lot harder than people think it is. Mm-hmm. I know you'll probably agree with that, Robin. It seems easy, right? Just text a couple of friends and get on a podcast. It, it sounds easy. This is it's not that simple, you know. It's not that simple. So, like Robert just said, I first, I, I started the, the the podcast in 2020 under a different name, and it was doing well. And I just couldn't sustain it. Anytime I would go and prep, I would completely go MIA. And I'm like, yo, I keep doing this shit. And I'm like, this is this is the last time I'm a, I'm gonna let that happen. I don't that's, care if I have to so pay somebody. Cool, yeah. I don't care if I have to pay somebody else to do it. I'll pay somebody to do it at this point. I'm like, I can't just keep stopping when I get when I feel like shit. But you know here's the I'm thing, because even if you try to pay someone else to do it, they're gonna fuck it up too. Cause we tried that and that was that was a disaster. Maybe maybe find the right person, but you're one hundred percent right. You know, when you feel like you don't want to do it and then you don't do it, you lose that momentum. Now the episode doesn't go up. And you know what? You let a couple of those happen and the consistency is gone. So you just got to keep keep going, even on the days you don't want to do it, even if on the days you don't have shit to talk about, just get on there, do your thing, because it just happens. Just like you were talking about, you know, when you go in the gym, you don't feel like going in the gym. Once you get it rolling, then you're good. Yeah, yeah. Do we yeah, ever have so- anything to talk about, though? Like, we just talk. No, we don't. <laughs> we, don't we don't have anything. Do you ever come in with a plan, dude? Like, I don't think you've ever. Never. No. <laughs> So like, oh, oh, man. let's make the rounds. Like, what fucking shows are coming up? How's everybody yeah. doing? People I, I, like it, though. Fuck it. When I tell you I have zero game plan, bro, I don't even know who I want on till, like, the night before. Robin knows. I text him fucking the night the night of the of the show. And it, it, it comes by so quick because in my head, I'm like, okay, it's Monday. Then I'm like, oh, fuck. It's Tuesday. Tomorrow is Wednesday. Then now I have to, you know what I'm saying? In a perfect world, I want to schedule like weeks ahead. I've done that a few times when I have somebody in mind, but sometimes I don't even have time in the day to think about somebody to have in mind, you know. But hey, you what I will say, ten minutes ago, by the way, so I did, uh-huh. I, 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 yeah, I did actually, yeah, I did. <laughs> um, Dude, it is hard, it is hard sometimes to coordinate schedules schedules with people, and you know, especially bodybuilders. You guys know bodybuilders, just like. You know, cancellations happen, schedules, things, meals have to get whatever, training. Things change basically when you're when you're coordinating and then it's multiple people. When you're trying to coordinate four, five, six people to get on and talk together, even for an hour with different time zones, maybe for certain people, it is hard. And everybody's got their own life. And not yeah. everybody even feels up to it. Half the time, I'm sure you know, like you have someone that's supposed to come on and something fucking happens. You know what I mean? And and shit happens. So you just have to expect that to happen. Um, Dude. that's why you gotta have more people to come on because otherwise it's like you know that's it just that's Zayden the- doing who, who wants to listen to that? I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the key. I think because if you're watching the podcast, you think people just say, Oh, hey Stu, come on, hey Zayd, come on, hey Robbins, come on. But this is life, shit happens. What if Stu's like, Hey bro, I'm actually in Dallas right now. Oh, my car broke down at the gym. You know what I'm saying? And what do you do? You say, "Oh, I guess we'll just cancel the episode," and that 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 used to happen to me. Then I'm like, you know what? 
the power the power is in numbers. There's a reason why when you go to the airport, they overbook the flights. And you're like, why do they do that? Because they learn that if you don't over the, overbook the flights, you're going to have an empty fucking flight. So yeah. it's the same thing. I, I'll try to get like six people and then I, I'll, I'll be happy with at least three, three out of the three out of the six. You know what I'm saying? And, and if I happen to get five people, then fuck it. We're going to roll with five people. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Now, it's, it's, it's so funny, than... man, because we started a podcast in 2020 as well, also under a different name. And I started with someone else. And then that me person bailed on me. <laughs> then, then, I, yeah, then I started Katie and Beef. And then the guy that I started that with bailed on me. Now, finally, I, I got Morgan to do the, the podcast with me here and there. But it's like, like you know, you know what I mean? Like, it's just not important for a lot of people. But when you decide you're going to do something, it's just like, all right, man, like, we're just, we're getting this done. Now we're, like, how many episodes do you have now? Like, under now or what, something like that? Like. Growing yeah, man, you know, we've been doing this for a minute, dude. Like twice a yeah. week for shit a while now. Not a year, yeah. but since USA, kind of, basically. Right? Yeah, yeah. That's kind of that's that's kind of impressive. How I don't yeah. even remember how much episode I have of the last one. It was me and a uh, uh, hand jacked, but the way we did it, it it was only us two. But we would have one a third guest, and we would basically give them the floor, which 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 works, but. You also want to. You also want the host to host as well. So you you, you want to get in there. You don't want to just give yeah. somebody the floor for an hour. How's know, uh, uh, How's Henry been doing, by the way? You talked to him with his leg. Yeah, uh, I, I see him back in the gym. Um, honestly, it, he has really good genetics, but it doesn't look like he lost a shit ton. You know, he looks a little bit nah, like, smaller. Yeah. yeah, but he's uh he's doing well, man. Uh, I don't know what he wants to do moving forward. Yeah, didn't um, you say he was kind of like, you know, one foot in, one foot out kind of? He, he was contemplating if he wanted to to compete again. And he did that one time. But I don't feel like, I don't know for sure, but I don't feel like he was 100% like that whole year like bodybuilding, you know what I'm saying? He did, uh, he did Tampa with me in 22. Was that his last show? Yeah, it, it was. It yeah. was, you know. So. He's a nice guy. Like, I like him, dude. Great guy. Great guy. Um I, I gotta get him on a podcast, but you know he he works a lot. You know if you work like, but like I said, I had a podcast with him. If you work in two jobs, nine to five, you're not, it, bro, bro. You come home from that first job and you try to get in the podcast. If if you feel like shit, you're gonna be like, bro, I, I can't do it. Like at the end of the, end of the day, you gotta earn a living, dude. You know? when, when I was still working last year, I was uh, I, we had like nobody there supervising us. It was just me and this one other guy in an office. We may as well have been working remote, right? So like, I would just like fucking pop on to whatever podcast somebody wanted me on rx muscle fucking xavier show whatever you're leading into the show last year when i was prepping i was yeah. i was just be at my desk at, or like yeah. in my car or something nobody would know <laughs> simple as that that's fucking smart <laughs> it, no well it, it, i only got away with it because it was such a weird like work situation i was in but i, I mean nobody cared so mm. Those are the best jobs, man. If I could find a job like that, this like today, I, I would I would still work it. You know, I, I was doing bodyguard work before at, at a spa, but it was like a nighttime spa. If you guys could, could read between the lines, hmm. you know, yeah. and, and I I would be chilling. I'll be hanging out. You know, like how much issues are you gonna have at a spa? Somebody don't want to pay. I mean, you don't got to do much because they're already kind of nervous. So you open the door, you're like, hey. Pay that fee, you heard? and then you close the door and they pay. It's not like you know, <laughs> it's not like you know, like most bodyguard. Work, you don't have to go fight anybody. You know, somebody gets a little drunk, you walk them out, and then you know, and they're nervous because a lot of the time they're they're. This was in uh, it was like in downtown, like close to Times Square. So these are like high profile people. So if if you're the coach of some football team, you don't want you don't you don't want me to you know you don't want to have a conversation with me. So once you see me, you're like, oh, let me be on my best behavior. You are people who don't want to be seen here. So it, it was. They, they see you open the door and they're like, here, <laughs> take my fucking wallet. <laughs> you don't want to, yeah, you don't want to see that. But uh, it was fun, man. You just, I, I would take a nap. I would hang out. I would, they would like give me food and shit, cook for me. That shit was a fucking. Was a That's like a classic <laughs> bodybuilder job, being a bouncer or whatever, you know? Yeah, I, I did yeah. it for a little bit in college, uh, the college yeah. bar. That was like the only one in town, uh, horribly run establishment, but it was really fun. Uh, and you know, you get tipped out pretty good. Like, I mean, yeah, you hang, hanging out with people, it's fun. And it, it, you know, I was dealing with a bunch of like pussy college kids, right? 
everyone was cool. I never got into I got into like one fight there. It was it. So I mean the, the bouncing job was even it might have even been more fun than the spa job at that point in my life because I was high energy and I, I kinda I kinda like to fight back then, right? <laughs> now <laughs> I, I definitely wouldn't <laughs> back then. <laughs> yeah. Back then. I, I definitely I wouldn't want to bounce today. Just because I, I like to keep my mind at a peaceful place. It makes me like a nice person, right? Once you know, I think any one of us, if, if you're in a bad place all the time and people yeah. are like wanting to fight you, you're not going to be a nice person. You, you just, it's, a, it's a very chaotic, you know, energy type of place. Like you don't want to spend your time there. I agree 100%. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I made a post the other day about like good people and bad people, man. Like no baby is born one, one way or another. It's your environment. I think it's hard for people to understand that because some people have never been in the environment that would bring that out of them. But but every single one of us, we're animals, bro. Like if you're somewhere starving in a bad mood, you're gonna be a complete like like Stu. He's hungry right now. Look, he's a different person. Look at his face. <laughs> no, but dude, but, uh, I was, can I just say when people are on drugs, alcohol, you know, they're in a different yeah. mind. You know, they can become different people. Exactly. I, can yeah. I just say on Xavier's show yesterday, I was I was in a right <laughs> fucking mood. I don't know why, because he was late. He he fell asleep. He didn't set his alarm. He was like an hour late, and then we talked for like half an hour. Xavier, I love you, but like we got to get to the topic. Like we got to we got to get the shit rolling. Like because we didn't finish that shit until like three forty five yesterday. Yeah, yeah, and we were supposed to start at noon. Yeah. And I was like. <laughs> I'm sorry, you know, we, I, I just four hours of my day are just gone now, <laughs> you know? We we talked and we talked off air. Remember it I'm like yeah, you like press, afterwards, yeah, yeah. I'm like, you want to hear recording over there, Xavier? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I guess we, we couldn't really record the subject we was talking about anyway. So <laughs> you know. But yeah, uh it, it's 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 really environmental. Like imagine I don't know if, if any of you have been in like a bad relationship. Whether it's an abusive relationship or something like that, you start to become like that person. You know, and when somebody's just a horrible human being and you're with them, you know, you start to become, you know, you don't you don't become a better human being. You become a worse human being. You start finding yourself yelling and arguing and coming out of character because your environment is going to shape you. So the bouncing mm -hmm. stuff, I wouldn't want to be around that environment. Even bodyguard work, I could I could bodyguard like something like that. I wouldn't want to bodyguard like a rapper or something or something like that because. They're gonna put you in a in a bad space. These rappers, man, you don't want to bodyguard for them. There's always something going on with those guys. Yeah, it's it's big always, music. Why do you have to be shooting each other and stuff? Like, it's you always, are rich now. Why are you still holding on to like street beefs with people, dude? You have fuck you money. Go live somewhere. Gotta, nice. gotta keep the reputation going, man. Oh, whatever, man. <laughs> that Robin, I mean, Robin. Robin might be right. That might be why they're doing it because it doesn't make any logical sense, right? Even I gotta be honest. Imagine being, about a, being a product of your environment, like that's hard to change. Even if you're rich and famous, you know. That's but there's a reason why uh, people in New York used to talk shit about Fifty Cent. Why did he come back to Queens? Why did he come back to the hood? So he can get shot. Why the fuck would he come back to the, the place he just escaped? You know what happened last time, right? <laughs> yeah. The fucking yeah, yeah, nine like... bullets, right? <laughs> and, and, you know and, and he seems to be doing pretty good now. So I think he's doing and, the right thing. Right? Bro, fifty is yeah. so funny. Like, he's he's still like what is he's he's close to fifty years old now, right? Yeah, he is. He's like, yeah, yeah, like <laughs> and he's just still funny as fuck. Call me blah, dude. He was. He was roasting Diddy for years before all this crap came out recently. Always, he's always yeah. been giving he's, shit. I, he's, he's been a guy who's prioritized health. Whereas like some of these other rappers, like I don't know what the fuck they're doing. I mean, I'm sorry, but if you're just like always like messed up on some kind of like drugs and shit, that is such a weird image to be like oh, well. to maintain. And like, how do you live your life like that constantly? Like I can only imagine like going through like drug addiction myself and stuff like, to live your whole life like that, like it seems glamorous, but it is so sad, man. Like, oh Bro, my god, they're, they're the drug for everything. Like, they wake up, they'll take an Adderall and then take a perk and then smoke weed. Like, damn, yeah, I'm so confused. Like, I, I, <laughs> I, I love Lil oh. Pump, but dude, if I oh was him, god. holy I would shit, not want to live, you know what I mean? Because that's serious <laughs> business, man. Like, 
that 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 song exactly describes what you're talking about. Like there's a drug for every moment of the day and everything is just, but then it's like the next day you have to repeat that and you're constantly chasing something that you can never be as good as that one time. You know what I mean? It's like, fuck man. That Bro, is twisted. Be, there was one time when I was training more people in person, I started training like celebrities, right? Whether rappers, producers, and some of them actually take gear. On top of all the shit they do all day, they take yeah, gear bro. just to look like shit. You know, like yeah. literally just to look like a, a average rapper. They take gear. I'm like, dude, I think if you're a rapper, right, you're probably getting laid so much that you they, need they like some it. hormones to like, like yeah, help your true. dick keep up. You know, like if you're just like if you have like an average sex drive and you have women throwing yourself themselves at you, like you're gonna need some like supplementation to like keep up sure. like you performance know performance enhancing for yeah. sure yeah. yeah that's a good point they they they'll take like uh i i mean I, i've never tried these so i wouldn't know but I, I heard that when you take a perk and you have sex you'll you'll last forever or whatever the case is some shit like that or if you like take time. molly okay that's, that's what they that's what they all tell you right <laughs> that's what they all tell you but i guarantee you if you if you're if you're a perk addict or whatever and you that's what you do you probably you are fucking you don't yeah exactly you just you know, are, your, your girl's mad perks. at you. That, let's, say, let's say that, right? Perks are like a painkiller, right? Perks yeah, painkillers. Yeah, okay. yeah. Is there anything uh, else in there or like stimulant or is it just... just I think it's just a straight up painkiller because I, I knew a guy and uh, he was a weird dude, man. And I, I lived underneath <laughs> him. So, oh, and he would always come knock on my door and try to hang out with me. He'd always be like messed up on something. And he's usually just drinking beers. But this is how I knew he was so messed up because I went up to his apartment one time for something. And he just had like had all this stuff like out on his dresser. It was like so weird. I'm like, oh, get me out of here. And then one time he came over, you know, I smoked pot with him and whatever. So we we hit a bomb. And then all of, a, all of a sudden he starts coughing. And then he's just like, my and he told me that his like his ribs just like cracked or like crumbled because he was just like <laughs> like he was, was just really such a, high. He, just, he was so yeah, I don't know, man. He was just and then basically he had to like uh Call the ambulance and like it was just this whole fucking ordeal, man. And I'm like, yeah. I, I don't ever want to be like that. Like, please, just no. stay away from me. I gotta yeah. say, like having shit out on your dresser, like if it's rec drugs, I get it. But like, like, are we really that much better? Like, just no, leave it out. Like, <laughs> no, I don't I don't know. Say, like, I, all my shit's everywhere, bro. Like, yeah, when I go like, to you my know buddy's, buddy's house, you know what you're getting into when you come over here. You know yeah. what I mean, like. Like, look I, at me. Like, what do you expect? You know, you know what I mean? I, I stay with my buddy down in Dallas. You know, he's a bodybuilder, too. And I was like, I really appreciate you, dude, because you got shit just laying out on the dinner table, whatever, ready to go. And I do the same shit. <laughs> that makes me yeah. feel better about myself, you know? <laughs> my no, girlfriend, yeah. shockingly, doesn't really care because, you know, she's all into bodybuilding, too. But yeah, yeah. This, uh, yeah, dude, no, man. this one client, he was taking gear. But he didn't even know his gear. He was taking Anavar, and he was like, "Hey, my my, my homie told me to take this." And he showed me a picture. I'm like, "Yeah, that's 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 called Anavar, bro, uh, Alexandrolone." He's like, "Oh, really?" I'm like, "It's steroids." But he didn't give a fuck. He he was gonna take it regardless. You know what I'm saying? But it's that's like so weird, man. He could so barely weird. give me a workout. He'll do one set of curls. Hold up, go on the phone for a second. I'm like, yeah, what's up? Hey, yeah, you know I'm here. You know. I'm like, I guess you're paying me, so I, I'm gonna just wait. I don't know what the fuck. I'm, I'm gonna just wait for you to finish your phone call. It, it, it was, it, it wasn't that, and then always late, the latest fuck. I usually show up with some girls. I don't, I don't understand some of these young girls, man. Like, what, wh what are you gonna do with this guy? Like, you know, he has ten different girls. I don't, <laughs> I, I can't get it. And they're, they're nice looking girls. They, they seem like they have a bright future. The whole nine, but they'll. They'll shack up with the rappers, though. Rappers, rappers get some ass. You know what I'm saying? I don't. It is what it is. I'm like this guy kind of smells know. like. I'm like this guy. He got some nice clothes on, but he kind of smells like shit. Smells like he didn't shower. Breath stinks. I mean, yeah, well, I mean, like <laughs> they don't know, have man. to. You know, they don't have to like, shit. You right? <laughs> if you're that high value in the dating market, like you really don't have to put any effort in. It's it's I, weird, I right? I had a, I had a yeah. friend when I lived in Portland who was on the stunt team. So, like, you know, they, they he's cheerleading and he was throwing stunts and stuff. Uh, and they he was, like, he, he spent a little bit of time around, like, the basketball culture there yeah. um, and the basketball players. And, like, dude, those guys get paid a lot of money, right? But a lot of it goes out in child support and alimony. Like, some of these guys, oh. like the majority of what they're making goes out in child support and alimony because, like, 
what these guys do, you know, young, young men with maybe no father figures, yeah, tons yeah. of pussy being thrown at them, a lot of money. And they like go to a different town, like three or four times a week. And they just go like on Instagram, find some hot girls, like their pictures and they start DMing so, them. And by, before you know it, you have like two people showing up yeah. at your, wherever the fuck you're staying. Right. And, you know, multiply that times a whole season, many seasons. And, like, like that that. shit can get expensive, you know? (laughs) You know, you sometimes they give you presents. (laughs) They they do. I used to, you know what? I I, I used to judge them a little bit harsher until I got a little older and realized how stupid I was when I was, like, in my early 20s. Then I'm like, huh. Now, in hindsight, I'm like, I, if I if I was mind you, I didn't have a lot of money. But if I did have a lot of money, I, I probably would have made some stupid choices at that at that age, you know. But there's a level there's a level of stupid choices. How many times? How many babies are you gonna have? But how many different women? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like I, I I have people in my corner that would try to be like, hey, bro, you got a lot of money now. Be careful. And then you know I, I would eventually listen and learn. But if there's just I don't a know. culture of it though, like. Yeah. All the other basketball players are dealing with the same shit. It's just normal, you know. Yeah. Like, I, mean, I think Xavier had a good point. You guys were talking about something, and he said like how being broke was was a valuable thing at some point in your life. Like when you're young and you're broke, like that fucking saved me because fuck I was yeah, so broke that I was like homeless at one point because I was just partying all the time, like just being so stupid. And uh, the fact that I was broke, it, it didn't let me like party as hard as I wanted to. You know what I mean? Like you can party yeah. to just like just go off the rails because i just knew people that were just always dying and i'm like oh okay well it's not gonna happen to me obviously i'm young fit healthy bodybuilder i'm fucking invincible that's like 10 years ago though. now i'm like i can't even believe i was like that you know like going like partying and like thinking i just spend all my money and like it's okay i'll get another paycheck tomorrow like yeah. really <laughs> really like wow what's Stu? what's Stu said about the culture right there's like bodybuilding, uh, regardless of what people might think, most of us are really morally sound. Actually, think about it. All your bodybuilding friends, we have a lot of same morals and values. The, might have yeah. different, the, might have different point. dating dating viewpoints. But <laughs> 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 yeah, there's a couple of freaks. You know, there's there's some freaks and weirdos yeah. in the industry, right? Uh, just like yeah. there isn't any pool of people. But like the people at a high level who are it's so, it's such a small world you know yeah, the yeah. professional ranks and like the high level amateur ranks yeah, yeah like everybody knows each other after a few years of being in it so like you gonna shit where you eat like that you really it's can't not, man yeah. and the people that, who do kind of get ushered out and people know sure. that like hey you're a, you're a shithead or you know so i agree if you're if you're like a 22 year old nba star you might have like a list of your but hey, look at this one, look at this one. And everybody's supporting it, like, yeah, you're getting all this ass. If if I was to do that right now, y'all would be like, Well, that's that's lame. Like, I I'll probably say the same shit. If one of y'all was like, Yeah, look at all these this ass I'm getting in English, I'd be like, Good job. Like, we don't we we're not really like that. Most I think people maybe think bodybuilders are like that, but most of us maybe maybe fitness people, but not actual bodybuilders. Well, here, we don't here's care. The thing, like, we got high sex drives because of the hormones that we take. But if you're dating somebody who also does bodybuilding, they probably do too. So, yeah, like, yeah. it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go be philanderous and, you know, unfaithful, mm-hmm. you know. it yeah, Sometimes yeah. it does. There's some, you know, well-known instances of that happening, yeah, I won't yeah. say. People, but people like, make mistakes for sure. The thing the thing is, like, it's a good point, though. Like, I feel like, you know, if you're, you're focused on bodybuilding, you want things to be... Like, you want to have, like, someone who's going to be there and support you. Like, you don't want to be having, like, distractions no, yeah. with multiple different... Like, it doesn't make sense with the lifestyle. Like, dude, I would yeah. I would hate to have to communicate with more than one girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, at the I, end of prep, I can barely handle one. It. Yeah. Like, <laughs> at, the, at the end of prep, if my girlfriend cooks a tray of fish for me, I'm, like, the most grateful person in the world. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, it's so nice, man. It's just like what, doing what, my laundry. What, what, what more like could any other girl do for you at that point? Nothing. That's all you no. need. Just a tr- fucking tray of fish. Yeah. Stu's happy. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's simple. But, but like you don't you don't need fifty girls to to get the job done. If you have what it is is your quality of women. I mean, think about it. The quality of women these basketball players date. They're not 
they look good. Don't get me wrong; they're ten out of ten physically, but they're not. They're not high value women. So well, you they're, get it. they're like they're groupies, you know. They are they, are, they know each yeah. other. They are they are playing a game because they are trying to get pregnant yeah. and like get child support, whatever, right? So like they know exactly what they're doing. Um but they they all fuck the same people. Like yeah. literally, like like Jalen Green is like 21, right? Or 22, and he's dating like a 40-year-old woman that used to bang players that he looked up to. Like, what type of that's weird. That's he's an expert, a baby dude. <laughs> well, oh. don't get me wrong she looks great she's 40 but she looks fucking phenomenal but who cares like i don't give a fuck you look you look good i mean i don't know there has to be more more standards than that so when when the standard of the woman is low now you may need five women just to replace one woman one good woman right and that's you, not that's you think more is gonna like fill the void when actually what you need is like companionship and friendship and and all that other important shit that you know is the important part in a relationship, right? Exactly. So you're totally missing that. Exactly. Yeah. But to go back to to that last podcast, I don't actually want to date different women. Like I, I'm just trying to expedite the process to finding the one woman. Uh, but I just want to make that clear because I feel like some of the guys who agreed with me, they kind of sound like scumbags. They're like, "Yeah, fuck all these." I'm like, "Nah, that's not. <laughs> that, 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 that's not. That's not what I was saying. I'm not even saying I, I would be having sex with all the women I'm dating. I'm just trying. I'm trying to expedite. It's like speed dating. I'm trying to expedite the process to find because this is L.A., bro. There's a lot of women, but a lot of um, hmm. <laughs> maybe not women who agree with with my standards and, and morals, right? So I, I got to shift through that shit quick. You know, I got, I got to make sure, oh, nope, you know, shift through that shit fast, you know. But, hey, you man, know, by the end of the We were talking about Dallas yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Think about Dallas. it. Think about it. That might be the move, right? That might be the yeah. Move. LA is LA, LA, a different beast, man. You know, but um, do we actually have anything to talk about today besides uh, dating? We could talk about uh, all the crap that we talked about yesterday with Xavier. <laughs> Like, yeah, you guys, you guys already talked about the Arnold Brazil. You guys already talked about Detroit. Yeah. Well, I mean, so Detroit, um, yeah, like it's surprising how few people have shown up. Uh, and it's, it's you know, I'm kicking myself. I wish I would have done it. Um, Is it only six people, thing. right? I'm going to grab six some people. Uh, drinks. Well, wow. Yeah, I think it's a two horse race between uh, Vito and Martin here. Um, yeah, I don't think Tonio is Tonio back in the states yet. Is he back in Reno? I don't think so. Give me one second. What the fuck is knocking on my door? I'm not sure though. Yeah, so like, I, I don't, I don't know if it's like just a timing thing or what, because the incentives are there. Like we were talking about, the prize money's there. They got like a best poser award. They got a most muscular award with, with cash attached to it. You know, um, I just saw that. That's a really cool thing they added on to it. Yeah. So props yeah. to Fuad for for putting on like, and I've heard you know Robin, you were saying that he puts on good shows in t like the Toronto area, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, maybe it's just a first year thing. Maybe it's a timing thing. I don't know, but. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I'm definitely going to plan on doing this next year. Uh, I know, yeah. right? Yeah. I know it's, it's, it's like a little too, too little too late now. Cause it's a couple days before the show, but man, I was just, I was just thinking like, this would have been a perfect show to do. And it's right before New York and then California and the Toronto's right there. It's just, but the thing is, is we just didn't get ready uh, quick enough. We didn't start early enough to make it happen. Dude, so. The fucking annoying thing for me is like, I am lean enough right now. Or like three weeks ago, right? If I decided to do this, I could have changed like drug stuff around. I could have pushed harder on the gas, sure. like, and gotten sure. in shape for this for sure. I'm, I'm but sorry. but like, I just didn't, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh well. Oh, this is. Oh, this is Gabriel from Canada. Yeah, I didn't even yeah, realize. Gary Epi. Yeah. Oh, where shit. does he live? Yeah. He's French Canadian, right? Yeah, he's uh, he's not too far from me. He's a couple hours like. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Wait, he he's he he's open, but he isn't he like five three? Yeah, he is super he, dense, dude. Yeah, like, he, he's oh. uh he's as wide as he as he is tall because holy he's shit, five, that man five, has a five, strong maybe. brow line. God damn, he does. Yeah, respect. He, he has a lot of muscle, so so he he can't make two twelve. He's he's over there, isn't he? He's like he, he turned pro like two thirty, right? 
Yeah, I don't even know he's super heavy. Now, but yeah. he's big. He's pretty big. He's very wide. Wait. That's for sure. So he's gonna be one of the most muscular people on stage because what the fuck? That's a, that's a lot of muscle to carry at the height, bro. Yeah, what yeah. The and he's fuck? peeled. Yep, he's peeled too. Yeah, but he's, he's underrated just because he's never he's never really gotten any recognition. Yeah, yeah. So has he done a pro show yet? I think he he was prepping for New York last year, but I he pulled out. I think. Yeah, he did pull out on a musher. Why? Um, oh, actually, yeah, he he got sick. Something something bad happened. He was in the hospital oh. for a bit. But um, but he's good now, and I think he did Toronto. I'm pretty sure his debut. But oh, he did. Okay. Excuse yeah. Me. Wait, is, is he a coach? He's Who's a coach. Uh, I don't think Harris? he did his debut. He said he didn't do his debut. Oh, he didn't. He didn't do a debut yet. Oh, that that was supposed to be his debut, and he couldn't he couldn't get to do it then. Yeah. This guy okay, has it, a really it, nice physique. You know, uh, it's one of those guys where like. Put ten pounds on this, and he's gonna be really dangerous. Like is, is the way, Harry? It, yeah. yeah. What well, is, is Harry the black guy or the or the white guy? The white guy, right? He's the white guy. Yeah. Okay. Harry Harrison McHarry. He's not very hairy though. He looks like he's shaved. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he looks like he's gonna need more tissue, but everything is there. The the the, the bones are there. The the the, the, the uh, framework is all there. Yeah, he's he looks, he looks coming great. a long way to compete, all the way from England, right? Yeah, we got to start. We got to start looking at the the uh, the upcoming guys. I feel like we kind of been focusing too much on, on like the top the top pros. They already get they they already get a bunch of attention, you know. We got to yeah. show show the other guys too. Who's yeah. this black guy? He got a good physique. I think it's one of his. So Matt, you, you know he's him? on his pe- page a lot. <laughs> Yeah, he, is, he, is he it might be his client or his training partner. Oh, I think that's his client, maybe. Oh, he looks good. And this guy has clients too. Everybody, everybody got clients. <laughs> you never know who's who anymore. Everybody just posts <laughs> all their clients all over their own page. I do the same thing. But I, I try to make uh, it, uh, I try to I try to make it obvious if it wasn't obvious already. Yeah, for me, I, I usually post clients on my story. But I, I don't really post on my page. I'm I'm just the worst marketer. I don't market anything. I don't. I, I'm not good at that. I think it's nice to give your clients a little bit of recognition too, put by putting it on your own page. But I, I always put my watermark logo just so you know it's like, hey, this is not me. This mm-hmm. is something I'm working on. One of my clients left me because he said uh, I didn't believe in him because I, I didn't post him on my page. <laughs> I, I, felt I, like that. That I felt like that before bro i felt like that before <laughs> so so maybe you gotta start posting them yeah uh, yeah yeah if they it, deserve it, it it is but it's, it's rough it's like if if you don't have it genetically but you put in the work is one thing but i feel like some people just don't really they don't fully understand the game so it's hard it's hard to it's hard to get somebody to understand something that they just don't understand. Like if you if you if you don't understand the level of muscularity and conditioning that you need, it's it's almost impossible to get you there because what you have in mind is so far away from what what's reality of what you need to look like. You know, so yeah, that, 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 that's always something that's hard for me to like. I don't want to be a dick, so it's hard for me to say exactly what I want to say, but I do say it, and sometimes people get offended, but. What else would I do? Just be like, you look great. You're gonna win, and it put you on stage, and you get last. It's yeah. kind of it's it's a hard line to. That's just maturity for that person to understand. To just grow, you got to follow the sport for long enough to understand what you're going up against and what it takes. Yeah. I agree, man. I, I've lost clients because I told them they weren't ready, and they just went to another coach to get on stage. Mm-hmm. But if I'm gonna put someone on stage, I'd rather them. I feel like having a good chance to win than just mm-hmm. going on stage because you want to. And yeah. not everybody, not everybody's just in that same vibe. Some people just they want to get on stage just to do that. But you have to kind of consider like what's going to be your reputation at the end of the day as a coach. So yeah, yeah. lifestyle is different, right? For for me, if I get someone who comes in and they're like, "Hey, you know, I want to do a show in like six months," and there's no chance they're going to be ready, I'll be like, "Cool, like let's start working on something, but set some set some lower goals first and make that the ultimate goal instead of making that the first goal and then." Then they're thinking, oh, I'm going to be a pro by next year. It's like, no, 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 slow down. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's, yeah. let's think about getting your waist down a little bit and creating the proportions and just reframing so, things for them. 
so many steps. Now, if yeah. it's your first, if it's your first show, I get it. I can't expect you to understand what you're getting into fully uh, until after your first show. So sometimes that first show, I'm just gonna get you up there, no matter what, just so you can understand what I'm saying because. I, I can't explain it to you, bro. You have to be way bigger, way harder. It just goes through one ear out the other because they're like, I'm big and hard. I'm, I'm good. And you're like, okay, cool. Let's see how yeah. you look. Unfortunately, well, those comparison it, pictures, it'll click. Unfortunately, so when I'm holding the, when I'm holding the NPC news online like this, they like, see that? Look, look at your ass. Look at his ass. You see? You see? <laughs> then, then they're like, damn, I didn't know because they'll be like, oh, I could beat that guy. I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Okay, let's yeah. see. Just put them, put them up there. Let, let them see for themselves. Now they're going to be angry, whatever, go through their emotions. But you feel that feeling? All right, now let's actually, you know, now actually listen to yeah. me and, and let's get this done, right? Because they'll be like, point. okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, first time competitor, they'll be like, yeah. You got to be I'm, hungry. I'm you got to be hungry. You got to be hungry, win or lose. You got to have, exactly. have someone who's not going to be fragile to lose. Like, oh, if I don't win the show, it's like, well, then you didn't fucking work hard enough. You know? Very good point. Good you first have to be going a grace, to graceful yeah. loser. Yes, right. yeah, hundred percent. The the loser who Dude. wants to improve because then you're not a loser. Lo losers Boom. are the one that are like, I, I didn't win. I was so good. Like I worked so hard. Oh man, Ooh. Ooh. don't get me started. There's a lot of those in LA. <laughs> the politics guys. Oh yeah, these guys don't like me. Oh, the muscle contest guys don't like me. I'm like, bro, they don't know who the <laughs> fuck you are. You are they have relevant. No yeah, <laughs> they don't. You think they're watching that? There goes Michael. It goes yeah, there, was, all, dude, there was so many guys like that here in Canada, and they, and they would all say the same thing. And like, it's like, oh man, it's like it's politics here in Canada. It's like well, you weren't good enough to win. Like, what are you talking about? Just, just shut up. I'm just imagining uh, like Tarek and Tamer, like, yes, we're gonna fuck this guy over. Yeah, <laughs> the muscle yeah. contest crew. <laughs> like, they don't know you exist, buddy. You know, like Class D born shorts or something. <laughs> Relax. They 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 have no idea who, uh, who the fuck you are, and it's like, how do you expect to improve if you think you're perfect? You're telling me you're perfect. There's nothing you can improve that that could have made you one. No, no, I was just perfect. Well, you're gonna continue to to lose, and you're gonna continue to complain because you don't realize that you have a lot to improve, right? So that yeah. mindset alone is already a losing mindset. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So is you can't. I think yeah, that, ha having the opposite mindset is why we've gotten to where we are, is because we're always we're always our worst critics, and we're we're, we're never gonna we're never gonna. For me, for me personally, I, I always want to hear the truth. You guys, I'm sure, are the same. You appreciate when someone gives you the truth about yeah. your physique and and tell you this is what you need to work on instead of just saying like, oh man, like. Zayd, you're so big already. Like you don't need to push the gear anymore. Like no, you need people to tell you that you fucking do. <laughs> first thing, <laughs> you know huh? First thing comes to mind, bro. Okay. All right. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say something about Stu getting leaner, but you know, I'll get huge, gonna, motherfucker. I'm gonna yeah. get fucking huge. This <laughs> I love it. Bro. We, we, I love we all believe it. No, but uh, I I seen it happen. With, I seen it happen with Zayd since we talked about Zayd. Second, third, fourth, third, second, second. And Zay comes off stage. He he has and and I'm looking like Zay should have won that show, but Zay doesn't. He they like, not all good. I'll I'll come back better. I'll come back a little harder. And at no point have I seen him actually feel like oh this is politics or say anything like that. He just came back bigger and leaner. I mean, listen, you come back bigger and leaner every show. At some point, you're gonna fucking win the show. Like like yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's just how it goes. So you'd always be like oh. uh I'm thankful, you know, I'm thankful I'm in this position. I'm doing what I love. And that's it. Keep, keep it keep it pushing. You know, you can't, even if it was politics, you can't do shit about it anyway. So well, the only thing you can I, I'm do I'm wired is the way I try to find what's wrong with me first before I try to make a complaint. Yeah. You know? And yeah. you can always work on something. So, so. Yeah, dude. I, yeah, I remember the, the, first, the first time I did like super heavyweights to try to get the pro card. And I got like 11th or 12th place. And I remember getting off stage, like Joe Seaman was like second place that year or something like that. Like I got destroyed by everybody in Canada and I walked off stage. I was super happy. And all the people were, were they were like shocked. They're like, what's wrong with you? Why are you not upset? And I was like, because I got to be in the super heavyweight. That's what I wanted to do. And I was actually big, you know, it's just, I tried to look at the positive because I'm like, if I'm walking off this stage fucking miserable and sad, then it was a bad experience for me. I'm not gonna let that happen. Just try to, and don't get me wrong. I've been fucking sour after some shows, but I always try to turn it around in the end to look at the positive because that's the only way you're going to grow, you know? Yeah, yeah. There, There's this guy, 
that used to be in the Bronx, right? And he would do every fucking show of the year, every single am- amateur show in the East Coast of the year. And I don't, I don't know if he dieted or not, but he just looked like, like nothing, bro. He just looked like a guy. I, I, I didn't see one, one muscle on his body is defined or not. Like he just. He looks like he doesn't even There's work out. A couple out. of those like like in everywhere, I guess, because we have the same same couple of guys. They're just like the regional lifers. They're just kind of like always doing the shows every year, not ever really improving. Like, damn, dude. <laughs> like he's not one of those like like overweight guy that you you know when you see nationals, you see that one fat guy. He's not no, that no, guy. No. He 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 doesn't have a lot of body fat. Uh, he's not he's not lean. He doesn't have a lot of body fat, but he doesn't have a lot of muscle. It's just you look like at, at like a plain generic body. There's nothing going on, not one striation when I one line. So yeah, it's probably a mixture of genetics. I'm sure he probably just has shitty genetics. He trained kind of hard, you know, and he just looked pretty horrible every single show. But he doesn't stop. Yeah. I owe that to Jay Jay Cutler, David Classic, and I see this guy, bro. Like ten years later, somehow he made his way to fucking Vegas. And is doing the Jake color the classic, and he looks exactly the same that he looked ten fucking years ago. Yeah, and I'm like, dude. holy fuck! There's some people that- in the Northwest that are like really bad at that. Like they've been as long as I've been competing, they have been competing and looking exactly the same. And I went from being a classic physique guy to a men's open guy in that time frame, like yeah, yeah. seventy to eighty pounds of muscle in Crazy. seven years. You know. And they like I, you have to like try to not make progress in that kind of time frame. If you're taking drugs and even working out, like you should put on a little muscle, right? Especially, yeah. if, you're like, they, they, Especially if you're competing and getting your ass beat every time, wouldn't you be like, hmm, maybe I should kick it up a notch? <laughs> it's crazy, man. Yeah. I, I mean, it's either they have the sh- most shit genetics ever, which sometimes that's the case, not usually though. Like anybody can progress. If you are just looking the same at the local level year after year, dude, just play golf. Yeah. That's what I always like to say. Go play golf. Some, sometimes, yeah, you. I know. There's, sometimes there's a couple of them that probably do play golf, but then they get on stage like once a year, and they're all, and they're all, and they're so <laughs> nice, man. They're like, Robin, like so nice to meet you. Like you're a huge inspiration. They're like, yeah, this is my last show, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome, man. Congrats. Like, yeah, I just want to do this last one. You know, see them next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Aww. It is the the amount of. The amount of money that they must be spending, especially uh, some of them are they're crossing over divisions. A, hey, uh, I'm gonna try physique, classic, and body, but I'm like, it don't matter maybe, what division you do. Maybe my body is better suited to classic <laughs> physique, yeah, bro. That's, that's what, what it is. is. That's exactly yeah, what, what it is. Judges. <laughs> bro, these oh, people, boy. I mean, okay, at the end of the day, if I guess if it makes you happy, you should do it, but. It's hard for me to tell you to continue doing that. I feel like you shouldn't. I really feel like you shouldn't. Well, it's it's like it's different when you're taking drugs, right? I yeah, mean, yeah, if you yeah. were just doing natural bodybuilding, you know, that can be a, lo- a little anything too. But like, you know, fine. You're working out, you're dieting, training hard, whatever. That's cool. But like, I I, I kind of like to compare like the, the perpetually crap local level bodybuilders to like a rec league softball player. You know, like they go out, they're weekend warriors, right? They they kind of semi-seriously play softball. And these people semi-seriously work out. But if you're playing softball on the weekend, you are not taking trend. That's the difference. And that's what makes it like, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing this. And if you have kids and like you have other things you could do, be doing with your life, like what are you throwing away for this? Nothing. It, it, it's unfortunate too, because a lot of the times they're the ones taking the most drugs. There's actually somebody here in West Hollywood. I won't say his name, but he actually passed away, and he and, and he was one of one of those guys. He took a lot of drugs and worked out and competed here and there, but he never really improved. If anything, he looked kind of worse. He ended up passing away, you know, and he passed away alone at the hospital. His girlfriend didn't even know he was dead. Parents didn't know he was dead, and th- that's the kind of shit you want to avoid. You want to yeah. avoid. It's. I guess it's hard to tell somebody like if you don't have it, you don't have it. If you really just don't have it, you don't have it. So, taking more and more drugs, nothing's gonna happen. You're gonna look exactly. True, man. Like the thing is, like, and but bodybuilding makes you fucking delusional, and taking a lot of drugs can too. Mm Because I had a buddy of mine, and you know, 
guy had a heart attack, you know, regional level bodybuilder, really didn't really have the genetics, like just super tall and didn't really have the legs, but you know, he's a freak, but like, there's no way. And he just basically like killing yourself. You know what I mean? Like, cause he's still like, I mean, I, I hope he's not doing it now, but even after the heart attack, he's like, all right. Like I remember one day he stayed over at my place. I was like, yeah, man, you want to crash on my couch? He's like, no, nah, I'll just sleep on the floor. Just sleeps on the floor. I wake up in the morning. Like he's there in the morning, like scooping pre-workout in. He's like, he's like, yeah, like I'm ready to go. I'm like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, I'm like, oh man, you know, this, this sounds grim. I feel like we're getting a little grim here, but you, you will be shocked how many bodybuilders, including pros have had heart attacks and completely ignored it. You'll be shocked. Yeah. You'll be shocked. So oh. that's, that's, the, that's not, that's not good. Or, yeah. or are living with heart failure and not like the ejection fraction went from 65 to 60. That's, I mean, I'm pretty sure after every, everybody the off season, the ejection fraction is probably down a couple points, but I'm talking yeah. about, Actually, I'm talking about like, good. I'm talking yeah. about like 20%. Like I'm talking about their heart is basically Whoa. not functioning. Oh yeah. my god, dude! That that happens pretty pretty often, pretty often. The but. fact the fact that you brought this up because I've been I've been thinking about this and researching this and shit because bodybuilders, what do we what do we have to deal with? It's going to be our kidney, it's going to be our heart more than so than anything, right? Mm -hmm. So, do you guys think that doing low intensity cardio, or doing high intensity cardio, is going to be better for your 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 heart longevity essentially, or combination yeah. of this, right? For sure. Um, I mean. Uh, it depends how big you are, but if, if you're a big bodybuilder, doing high intensity cardio takes a toll on your heart. It, it, it does take a toll on your heart, so but it's good you'll for be better off. Yeah, it's good for your heart. Mm -hmm. that, that's that's what that's what other other guys were saying. Is I think on, on other podcasts, squads, podcasts, whoever, and that's the 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 myth, the old school myth that yes, we should do just low intensity cardio and not do high intensity cardio because it's too stressful for the heart. Are you talking about like interval training? Like interval training, but okay. like, and we should be more specific to you. I think like when I'm talking about high intensity interval training, I'm talking about doing basically to failure, like a, like a wind gate sprint on a, on a bike. Yeah. Yeah. 10, yeah. 15 seconds rest for 30. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or pushing up to even like 60 seconds, maybe for like a, a max. Wait, all that, wait right? you're talking about going all out on cardio. Yeah. 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 Well, it's good for your heart for like performance, but if you have like already a lot of bodybuilders have enlarged hearts, so your heart will grow if it, if you push it that hard, your heart will grow. Some people don't need their heart to grow. You know what I'm saying? Now, if you have a big heart and it's a strong heart, you'll be fine. You just don't want to have a big weak heart. I, mm -hmm. I feel like the, yeah, that's that's why the ejection fraction is super important because like yeah, I I same. have gotten an echo done and I've gotten a couple done actually. Um, and a couple of years apart, they were basically exactly the same. Uh, and they told me I had slight ventricular hypertrophy consistent with being an athlete. So mm -hmm. I probably had that when I was 17, you know, because I've been an yeah, athlete yeah. my whole life. Uh, yeah. it's, it's probably gotten a little bigger, right? But my ejection fraction was good. It was like 55, I think, yeah. uh, both well, times. And I put on like probably 30 pounds of muscle between like that first one and that second one. So I was really relieved to see that I hadn't, uh, you know, downgraded there. And it, since I'd gotten that done, it was in December 22, I'm taking less crap than I was then. I'm taking more health medications, more health supplements. So I need to go get it done eventually again, but I'm I'm feeling pretty good. Mm -hmm. I get I get what Robin's saying. There's a lot of benefits for your heart um doing high intensity cardio, but I don't I don't want people to think that they need to do it per se, because if you're a big guy and you have a low ejection fraction, high intensity cardio, you, you shouldn't be doing it because your body can't maintain it. Your heart isn't strong. It's not working efficiently enough to be able to manage high intensity cardio along with carrying your body weight. So th that could actually lower your ejection fraction, you know, but if you have a perfectly healthy heart or close to it, or you have a big heart, but the ejection fraction is fine. You can you can benefit from high intensity cardio because it would just make your heart stronger. You know, bigger and stronger is okay. You just don't want a weak heart that's getting pushed too hard. You got to get that ejection fraction back up before you can push that. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it depends mm -hmm. where you at. It depends. It depends where you at. You know, I guess. The, you know? the thing the thing about um like with with heart failure now they're they're using high intensity cardio with heart heart failure patients and they're finding that it's actually it, it's helping with their heart failure. Oh, did, I didn't. I didn't know about this new research. It's, it's new, dude. It's I new. Guess. Yeah. 
I wonder if that's in combination with, you know, losing weight as well. Because for sure, it's got to be right. Uh, It's fucking throwing on his Zempic and just, you know. (laughs) Well, yeah. So, so with that, I guess they haven't done research on bodybuilders. Would that work if you're a 300 pound bodybuilder? It would because, like, let's say, for example, like, uh, just assuming that we all have the same as you, I, I know that I do for sure. You guys probably do too, just having a slightly large uh, left ventricle sure. and being like athlete's heart, essentially, which is not harmful whatsoever and doesn't actually mean that your heart's going to grow from steroids or GH, but it doesn't mean that it can't, right? So, so if it was to grow beyond that point, then maybe that's a little bit dangerous. But I would say that, and again, like, you know, I don't fucking know everything, but I think that doing some high intensity cardio is going to be beneficial because what you're, what you're essentially doing is like your, your, your heart is pumping out a certain number of times per minute. And so if you need to pump out more times per minute, cause it doesn't pump as hard or as well every time, then your heart rate's going to go up. So even though your blood pressure might be in range, your heart rate's going to be up way more. And I think that's a common problem too, because I know that that's happened to me. My blood pressure can be totally fine. And then I'll, I'll check it out on my pulse and it's like 85, 90, and I'm just sitting here on the computer. So I know that I need to do something that's more high intensity in order to get yeah. that heart to pump more efficiently and harder with each pump. So, yeah. so that's, that's the ejection fraction that we're, we're talking to that we, we, we can benefit from doing that. The thing is, depending on, the size of you, your conditioning level, off season versus pre contest. That's when it's going to come down to how much and like how hard you're going to do it. But I think let's just say like just just for you, Beatty, right now, just do it once a week, couple sprints on the bike. That's all you need to do once a week for your off season. I wish I did that in the off season. I mean, it's so, literally like a 10, 12 minute session. You can get a ton yeah. of benefit from it. I yeah, need to start yeah. doing that, man. I. I have never done cardio consistently in the off season because I haven't needed to because my yeah. body composition stays so good. So it's it's kind of like eh, I'm gonna do it this year and I just never do, you know. And, and I was talking and I was talking to Ross too, and and Ross said I said because he posted that he's doing hit cardio. I said, do you do a lot of hit cardio? He said, yeah, I do as much as I can handle. I said, what is that? What does that mean? Are you doing it in the morning? Are you doing it like throughout the day? What's the timing of this? And he said. In contest mode, he'll do it fasted and post workout, just or either one, or depending in the off season, he'll just do it post workout so he can just eat first thing in the morning. So, yeah, I, I Ross is also high energy as fuck. So, I, yeah. I think he, that's why he likes doing high intensity cardio <laughs> <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is like, you know, obviously take it all with a grain of salt, you know, research against also same, same thing, grain of salt, because that doesn't, it's not the end all be all. We're different species at this point. But I do think that, and, and I'll tell you, yesterday I did fucking three sprints on the bike, and, like, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, my tongue was sore, like, fucking just from breathing so hard and pushing so hard. I saw, like, new veins in my calves, and then today I tried to do four bike sprints, and, like, I'm telling you, like, I just, I'm gassed from doing that. It's pretty embarrassing, because I remember when I did it before, I could do, like, eight, nine, ten, and be okay. So... I don't know, man. I think they're underrated, but you're right, baby. Like, there's only so much you can do before you're just tapping into, you know, your your reserves for your other training. So you have to be meticulous with how you balance it. But fucking, if you're trying to get lean, I don't know if you guys know uh, Andrew Andrew Hudson. He's an IFBB pro um, from uh, South Africa, and uh, he he's he's pretty fucking fat before he he started uh, bodybuilding, and that's what he always did. He would literally do hit cardio he told me like pretty much after or before every meal like 10 minutes just right beside his desk he would jump on a salt bike go fucking bananas then eat his meal and just repeat that all day hmm. so oh, that's a tough job yeah I then again that. though then again you can have people that just walk in the treadmill for 30 minutes and they get in shape too so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. For, but for you, you know for usa i would do uh, AM fasted cardio for hour, like medium intensity. Let's say like a three point five speed, but like a ten incline, which is which is pretty That's intense. A pretty but, good clip that gets my heart rate at like one twenty five. Yeah. yeah, but at, at this point of prep, I was on, I was on uh, caffeine, I was on um, ephedra, and I was on fentanyl. And by this point, 
Yeah, if you're, you're 125 before you even get on that thing. That's yeah, that's good for your heart, definitely. <laughs> that that shit had me so wired that at night I would do hit cardio, and the plan was to go like a minute fast, you know, a minute or two slow. But I was able to continue going. It sounds fucked up, but I'm going as fast as I can. But for some reason, I, I'm able to continue going. And I was like, fuck it. I guess we're going to do hit cardio for an hour straight. And I was, I, I was able to maintain it maybe like two weeks. I was literally doing bike sprints for an hour straight. You know, and Take meds, guys. Stuff. It'll work. It'll, yeah. it'll get you in shape. Because there will be no way to do that without 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 the friend to me. It is possible. Like who the fuck can can who can sprint for an hour? You you, you couldn't do it. You couldn't do it. You know. So <laughs> it, it's uh That's yeah. Take some effort. Yeah. Take some yeah. effort. You'll be able to do it. Well, actually, don't do it because I felt like I just lost. I just lost muscle by that point. I was just getting smaller. So yeah. uh, yeah, don't do it. Actually. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Back Thanks for sharing, the... Robin. I I definitely will include uh, cardio now in my off season. Honestly, dude, I will say one thing. I will say one thing about it. And if, if, if you're going to do it for any other reason, just do it for this reason is because it's fucking sometimes I'll be honest. It's fucking scary. Like when I'm like, dude, I have to get my heart rate up to like to that point where like I can't catch my breath. I don't really want to do that. And that's where my mentor, he just told me basically like I'm, I'm starting to get in the habit of being lazy with stuff and just little things yeah. like choosing like a machine press over a bench press or choosing an incline, whatever, you know, the thing, that's one thing, or just doing cardio. I always just do low intensity because that's what I'm basically always told to do. But what's, what's the harm in doing something that's more challenging just so that I have to psych myself up for something in the morning versus just like, I, I just can like roll in there and like have like really no thought. It's just like an extra addition of what it really did is just made me feel good that I did something fucking hard today instead of being lazy. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if, if you feel like you're getting to that point in the off season where you're like, damn, I'm starting to get a little lazy with things, go do some sprints. I guarantee you're going to be like a little scared and you're going to feel pretty good after you do it. You're going to feel great. You're going to feel, yeah, you're going to feel great. after. Yeah. But, you're yeah, not going to feel very good fitness. during it though. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, before, before prep, I took like three or four weeks off of cardio completely. And now that I added it back in, bro, when I tell you, even my mood is better. It's crazy. My mood is better. I feel better. I have more energy. It's just the weirdest thing. You know, cardio, cardio is a, uh, cardio has a lot of benefits. Yeah. But look at uh, Martin Fitzwater here. Did his Very legs good, get man. bigger? They did. Yeah. I mean, his right leg, you can see it's a tiny bit smaller, but he literally couldn't train that shit for like a while. He had like super bad sciatica and he finally got it fixed. Like I think the beginning of the year or something, um, but you know, it's not going to hold him back at all. He looks great. His it's legs have really nice shape. They do. Yeah. Especially the way the way he's posing it. He's posing the bigger leg in the in a good yeah. way. I think I, I think Martin is way more dangerous than people remember. And yeah, we got short memories, man. It's been a while since he competed, so we do. Listen, man, I I. I probably would have gave it to him over Andrew at uh was that Texas? Texas, yeah, I agree, man. I absolutely agree. I had him winning that that, that show. So dude. close, so many times now. You know? Think about that. Andrew is a top five guy. He hasn't so been out of the top call out in any pro show he's done. No, not even close. Yeah, I mean, so that should tell you how good Martin is, you know. Andrew, Andrew was more imposing. And he did, yo, something about his tan and glaze was, it made him look like a fucking statue, like like AI, you know? And He's the way his abs effect, are popping. Man. He's crazy looking. I think it was, yeah, it, was, it was Andrew's, uh, it was like his wow factor when he first came on the scene. It was just like, you just couldn't take your eyes off him. hundred uh, percent. As good as Martin is, because Martin just looks absolutely crazy for sure, conditioning all that. But sitting next to Andrew, I mean, your eyes just going to look at Andrew because he just looks so... Like you said, like a statue, right. like it's just crazy, man. So, oh, uh, bottom right there, that's Blake Corville. Oh, yeah, he won the show that I went to down in Dallas. He's doing nationals oh. next. You guys remember him? Yeah, yeah, Shredded. yeah. He was uh, last show he did was 21, 21 nationals, I think. Big too. Yeah, um, 
and he's brought up his like he used to just be all like arms delts pecs but he's really brought up his back and his legs and like his whole physique flows a lot better now um he's, so he's gonna do great yeah. nice abs too he's gonna do really good at uh at nationals let's see Tim um, Budisham over there what's uh what's James doing oh yeah Quentin's looking really good by the way is it, is this this is now when was this when did he post this um I think I think this is now yeah I think this is now yeah he looks like he added some muscle yep he has a really clean look he looks like an overgrown natural <laughs> yeah I, I will say people, people are saying that he needed more size on his back he didn't show his back here but I can say that just from looking at him from the back that he's bigger from the back this is like he looked exactly like this when he was natural just smaller you know it, it's yeah. funny because mo most people get on gear and sometimes your proportions change like your shoulders change a little bit your traps he looks mm -hmm. exactly how he looked just blown the fuck up which yeah. is which is a good thing I think yeah, James. James says he's just dieting for fun. I I don't know if I buy it. I feel like he's gonna do a show. Why wouldn't he do Detroit? I mean, I don't know. Bro. He, he could just do that, like just like die. He wouldn't even have to do anything. I think he's. Um, I think he's working on opening up uh, him and JP's gym. Oh yeah, it's not open. So, That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's kind of been like gradually opening the public. I don't know exactly what's going on with it, but. Um, I, I don't think he'll be in Detroit. Uh, he might be in New York, though. You know, he's uh, yeah, that'd be cool. Do you have a you have a relationship with uh, James? You guys talk? He, uh, no, I haven't spoken to him. But he's gonna be. I I really want to get to know him because everybody who I've talked to about him says like really nice things. Like just that he's a really quality guy and very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna get to guest pose with him in uh, Houston in uh, end of June. Yeah, end of June at Branch's show. Oh, hell yeah. Compton, Compton told me a story of, of how he met him. It was hilarious. But I can't I can't say it on... Stu, you, know. you should think about uh, maybe you should think about maybe doing some streaming. Streaming? Yeah, like James does. Oh, video games? <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Make some extra cash. Yeah. yeah, I'll be I'll, I'll be uh, beef stew the Twitch streamer, retired from this bodybuilding shit. Why not, man? Couple couple hours a night. Well, I'm I mean, not good at video games. I play them, but I'm not good at. Them. Oh, I'm the same. I, I'm if I got on any game competitively, I'd probably barely get to gold. <laughs> so it is hey, uh, Robin, is 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 this guy still in Canada? Uh, Brandon Harbody? No, he's not. Oh, he he, he left. He, he took off. He took. He pieced out. He's doing his prep over in the UK because it's just we're not good enough over here at Pure. You can tell <laughs> by the uh, the garden yeah. pictures he's in the UK. Yeah. I thought I thought he was gonna do a debut last year, and I thought he's gonna do one this year as well. He has four he... shows planned supposedly. Huh? You think you think he's gonna make it to stage? Uh, I mean, he asked you. What else he gonna do? <laughs> I feel like I, I, I not, feel like he. I mean, look at how many followers he has. That's, yeah, <laughs> he, he probably don't need to compete. Uh, I think I think he has a really fucking good structure. Honestly, I think he's under muscled. Would you agree, as a pro? Um, yeah, some of the classic guys are real, real big, man. Yeah, man. I, I like his look, but and he got he got in good condition when he turned pro, if I'm remembering yeah. correctly. But he did. He got in very good condition. Yeah. You know, like I the like, arms and the the delts and yeah, just muscularity wise, I think he'll have trouble against some of them. But from from watching, um, I haven't seen his videos in a while, so this could might not be accurate. But from what I remember watching his videos in the past, his off season doesn't seem to be very serious. It seems like he's doing a lot of traveling and and just sightseeing and having a great time, which is which is. What do you mean it's not? What do you mean it's not serious, baby? He started insulin this year. Don't tell oh. me that he's not getting. Don't tell me he's not getting serious. He started insulin this year. Robin oh, seems to have an opinion on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, 
I mean, uh, if he goes to Pierre, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people at Pierre have a, uh, an opinion. Hey, Robin knows I'm all just, the I'm talk, just, bro. I'm He's I'm a gossip monger. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, yeah, he doesn't seem like he's taking it very... Like like I said, I don't know him well enough. I don't see the behind the scenes. But from the outside looking in, it looks like he kind of just fucks off and has a great time off season. And uh, you can't, I mean, you can't get away with that as a pro. If you have the structure like he does, you, you can get the pro card in classic. But uh, as a pro, these pros don't fuck around. So he's going to have to maybe pick one. Uh, I don't think he needs to focus on competing, really, because he's making a better living than probably most of the classic pros, if not. Yeah. And that's, and that's, yeah. And, and honestly, like that is my opinion is to, to be quite frank, I think he just puts more focus into his business and other things than he does actually bodybuilding, which is a completely same thing to do. We're just totally different. So I, I look at it. Like if you're a pro bodybuilder getting on a pro bodybuilding stage, then you better be bringing your fucking best. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. so well, okay, so I don't think he's shown up like fat to any shows, right? If you showed no, up no, like no, no. out of shape and like, oh, yeah, yeah, I thought you were saying, yeah, yeah, like that, then yeah, you, you'd get roasted. But I'd well, roast you for that, but I don't think he's done that. There's know? a stage pick there. Well, he he gets he gets in um, a stage pick. Oh, yeah, now he looks okay. good, he, he definitely looks good. Let's go. Yeah, I mean that's a great shot. You know, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah a little bit more size on the delts, um, the legs, the back for sure, chest. Pretty much, yeah, just a little bit more mass on the guy. But now, the aesthetic and frame is there. He he's mentioned in a couple of videos that he has these binges sometimes in prep. Uh, I just think genetically, I think genetically his metabolism is so good that he doesn't really have to die very hard to get in shape. So that's why he's been able to get away with what, what he has, I'm sure. Because if you're binging and prep and still, he was probably the most shredded guy uh, at, at his show, you know? So that just said, he had the crazy metabolism, which is great. But as a, as I mean, a pro... Th that, that could be one thing. That could be one way to do it. Or you could just be like, because I was bulimic and I know you could you can do binges and then just take extra T3. And that's that's pretty much another thing that you could do, which... Wait, does that work? Gonna... It'll oh, work for me. Yeah. But I'm yeah, gonna, oh, yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna pop some side mount. Yeah. Let's go, baby. Yeah, you, you you won't win you won't win any shows, but it, it'll work to get you, <laughs> you know. Then 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 you're putting yourself into a vicious cycle right away. Obviously, you know that, but fuck <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it. I wanna eat. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's fucking awesome. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah. I've actually tried that. It, it didn't work out for me. So yeah. uh, that or you know, yeah. honestly, another thing you do, you, or you just you order a big pizza, you eat it all, and then you just do three hours of cardio to burn it all off. You know, because I'm sure, mm -hmm. I'm sure guys do that too, right? Ain't no way I'm doing three hours of cardio after eating a pizza. I know. I, yeah, that's, I meant that, that. Dude, sweating I, I pepperoni. Yeah, the the bulimic in me tried to do that, and I would be like, yeah, I'm gonna eat all this food, and then I was like, well, fuck, ah, uh, this sucks. Now I gotta puke it up and all that shit. So wait, so like, where, do you actually had like bulimia where you would like make yourself vomit? Yeah, because okay. you're right. Because you're right. Because when you're full of food, you don't want you don't to want exercise. To yeah, <laughs> like you man, sleep. you gotta have some serious fucking determination. And so, yeah, it just it relieves it a little bit, right? Obviously, I, I wonder if there's another word for. Uh, like there's anorexia, there's bulimia, right? Yeah. And then like if you binge and then take a bunch of T3, like use drugs to try and fix what you just did instead of like make yourself puke. Is there another like clinical term for that? Uh, I think I think it's like uh, uh, I'll make a clinical term: drug induced bulimia. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Drug sure. I don't know. How's it going? It's just a different kind of binge purge cycle, right? Yeah, it is exactly. That, that, that's why I faced for so long. I just found different ways to do it. And I'm like, wait a second. It's just, I'm doing the same thing. How is this, how is this any different? It's actually yeah. maybe worse because you're, because who knows what the T3 is doing. Anyways, anyways. Did, yeah. did this, this is my question. Does, does it work to any extent? Like, like if you eat and throw up, do, do you not, do you not gain the weight? Or no, you don't get in the way. That's how I got to 125 pounds. Huh. 125 pounds. I'm 5'11". But I then, cannot yeah. imagine you at 125 pounds. That's like yeah. one of your legs now. <laughs> I have I have pictures. Yeah. Oh, I it's okay. I don't, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see no, that. No, I, 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 don't, I don't post those because they're weird looking, but I was shredded. <laughs> but then you don't. you also don't get the nutrients. 
Are, are you getting are you getting any clean meal? Are you keeping the clean meals down or everything got to go? Everything well, got to go. Um, the thing is, it just depends on how sick you are. Because when I was sick, my I would skip breakfast. My lunch was was vegetables. I would get I'd spend a dollar at the at the to get lunch. I'd save my other five dollars, spend one dollar to get carrot sticks and celery. Eat that, Damn. and I'd binge it, binge at night, binge at night, puke, and then run all night. Basically, Holy shit. so this that. was all pre bodybuilding stuff. Then. This is this is pre bodybuilding. This is high school because this is how I got into high bodybuilding. Because basically, that's basically how I got into bodybuilding. Because I ended up then I got so fucking weak and brittle that one kid wanted to arm wrestle me in class and he broke my arm because it just snapped. And I was just like, damn, I fucked myself up. And then I cut my cast off and just started training because I'm like, oh, I gotta get wow. these arms stronger. Yeah, it was what. Wild. That's a what would make, rock bottom. That's dude. a good Jeez. comeback, though. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good yeah, comeback. Yeah, the comeback. <laughs> Some what shit. would what would make a what would make a hundred and twenty pound kid want to arm wrestle anybody? You should have said no, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was like it was a friend of mine. To be honest, like we were like boys, and uh, you you know you know like when you're in high school, it's like you have that one friend that you're kind of around the same like um, build sort of. It was like that, but he was like bulkier, and I was obviously shredding up fucking constantly so i think he just kind of looked at me like oh this guy's like shredded and wiry because you know like the shred wiry guys can be like really powerful and explosive yeah yeah it, well i wasn't training obviously with weights i was just running so i w had none of that strength and explosive power i was just <laughs> snap bones <laughs> were, were you oh. were you overweight before that i was just like skinny fat and that's why i was just like oh. like it was just a weird feeling awkward time you know yeah, yeah. Joe like fat. that, man. Fuck that yeah. shit. Still fucking skinny fat. <laughs> God damn it. I didn't. I, I didn't. I didn't like high school very much. I, Nobody I was, liked high school. If you liked high school, then you peaked in high school, and yeah, your life okay. isn't very good now. I was gonna say that. I was gonna say no. Some some people loved it, but it's because they peaked. Now they're in jail or yeah. I uh, got they, some good memories you know some funny shit that happened some horrible shit that happened but like i'm just glad i got it over with you know <laughs> i just had to forget about it school bro it's what's the, what's the funniest time. thing that happened to you guys in high school that you can think of off top of your head the what thing the best funny. thing the funniest funniest thing that happened to you or just like something that you could think of that was just like wow what the fuck because i remember we used to do like bush parties and like shit like that and that, uh, that would be kind of wild because we just always be running away from cops and like yeah dude you know, so i, I did remember i remember when i was in, someone not go ahead. i was just gonna say one time someone handed me a snail and i smoked that smoked marijuana through a snail somehow like that's that's, that's all i remember from this one party like that's that's hood rat shit dude that's hood rat whoa shit. Wow. a yeah. snail yeah bro that's <laughs> but that's what i'm saying that was a highlight of my high school so you can <laughs> it was to show you how, how good it was yeah I, I, didn't, I didn't party at all in high school until like after uh high school like senior year finished up and then like that summer before i went to college i was on one like i was working at a bicycle shop um like four days a week and i all of a sudden had money you know i didn't have a job previous then and it was like driving around everywhere i'd sleep in my house at home maybe three nights a week uh, and then I just like, sleep in my car or like crash at friends' houses. I was drinking heavily three nights a week. I'd just show up to work in high the school. Next day. No, this was after my oh, senior year gosh. finished, and then I just fucking let loose. Um, and I really, yeah, I really shouldn't. It's all a blur after that point. Yeah, I got I got really lucky a few times that I didn't like hurt myself badly. Um, but yeah, I've been, I've been there, bro. I've fucking been there. It, it was just like you know you're in this weird mindset where like let's go find a party to go to and you know it's a fucking thursday you're not going to find anything on a thursday but you're still like with your buddies like let's get drunk anyways you know like, oh, yeah, it was yeah, just yeah. terrible wait but <laughs> you, know, you can always find something but if it's a thursday night or a sunday night it's not gonna be a good something uh -uh. you didn't you said yeah. you didn't party in high school but right after high school you started partying right yeah so same, in same high way. school i was in this program at the school so i transferred to a different high school out of district which had this gifted program in it which was like uh -oh. these kids like they went off to <laughs> ivy leagues and like mit like very smart very hard-working kids i was like one of the only white kids in there it was all asians and indians um yeah I figured. so anyways you know i was a pretty smart kid but like i wasn't smart enough to like 
I was at the bottom third, I'd say, of that group. And I was a shit student. So, like, you know, I was just buried in work all the time. I was, like, super behind, blah, blah, blah. And then I finally got out of that haze in high school. And I was like, let's go. Let's go do fun shit. Um, and that I kind of did that through, I don't know, three or four months into college. And then I was like, this is stupid and expensive. And... I'm out of money now. So <laughs> then I started bodybuilding more seriously. That's that's so funny, man. That's that's almost like what happened to me too. Because high school sucked. I went to that snail party, another party. But the one weird it's thing was snail party. party. Yeah, I don't know. There was like there was like two parties, but the snail party was cool because I wasn't drinking. There was another party that I went to after that, and I, I started drinking because everybody was drinking around like 16, 17 at the time. This is where I lived up north, so bush parties and drinking. Dude, for some reason, I think every time, like an allergy or something with my body, I would drink, pass out, puke. And I, every oh. time, drink, pass out, puke, drink, pass out, puke. So obviously, my friends were like, dude, you suck. Like, we're not bringing you. <laughs> so, and, and then what happened was I ended up moving to another school. I moved to Toronto. And then I went to like a Catholic school and everything was so different. They had way higher standards than they did up north where no one gave a fuck about school. So now I'm in this like advanced, like calculus class or pre calculus or some shit. And dude, I'm failing this class. And I have to get a tutor just to help me get a 51. Like it was so it was so weird, man. But um, yeah, I don't know. I was high school. Go ahead. What you gonna say? I was just gonna say, like, if I have kids someday, like, I don't know if I wanna put them through that kind of academic rigor that I went through. Cause you know, looking at my life now, you know, I have like literal scars to show for like what happened in high school. I'm not, it wasn't, it wasn't good overall. Um, yeah. But like, I'd much rather have my kids have like a more balanced, busy, but more balanced lifestyle than I did at that point. Yeah. It's, it's so yeah. fucking weird though, man. Cause like the balance for us was different. Cause we, we did things that were like, it was just different, man. Like we didn't have like the technology to like, put our focus into like we had like other shit like when we were in high school right so yeah it was just a, a totally different experience mm -hmm. and then but it was just like yeah when i when i got to like 21 it was like party time but that's when like i became more social i guess when i started finally partying and like did all that shit but man i think high school for people nowadays is so much different I, it's, I, all, I it's all like, virtual it's strange yeah. like I, I would rather have if, if i ever have kids i'd rather have my kids being taught things in person and like being integrated with movement and like, you know, the shit they do in like the holistic schools or whatever. Cause man, like the actual school system is just garbage. It's, yeah. so, terrible, man. it's so terrible. And it's especially still, when you go through college and university, you have all this debt and you still can't even get work. It's just the worst. Don't get me started on that shit, bro. Yeah. We don't even need to go there. <laughs> <laughs> on, on Xavier's podcast, Nate, Nathan was talking about like his upbringing and stuff, right? Or just in general. And Stu was like, this is why I'm going to live in nice areas so I don't have to deal with all the not exactly shit. what I said, but yeah, pretty much. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but I got to agree. This might be a controversial uh, statement, right? But if, if you're in the Bronx, in the hood of the hood, why the fuck are you having all these kids? I'm sorry, you know? So uh, me personally, like high school was such a bad experience, right? You're like going to jail every day. Like ki kids oh. have guns, knives. People are getting jumped. Kids are getting killed. Deans are getting jumped. It's like why? But my my mom didn't have the aware. She did. She didn't know what was going on because she's from West Africa. She doesn't know what the fuck goes on in the hood like that. So she thinks I'm just going to school. She don't know. I, I'm in school, fucking trying to survive in this motherfucker. It's fucking jail, right? So my, I would say, why why even have kids at that point? Like I, I personally wouldn't have kids if I'm in that position. I would just wait and try to get out of that position before I put them through this. You know, so. Basically, I, I want to be in, in like a position of extreme financial security before I, I do that personally. I mean, it's yeah. not like you can't be a good parent without tons of money, right? But I no. want to have that there just in case, you know? Yeah. The, there's a limit. Like everybody's cars are different. Everybody's not going to be rich, but you can be successful enough to not be in that environment. <laughs> I have clients who work regular ass jobs, custodian work, whatever, and they save up a shit ton of money and put their kids in private school or shit like that. You know, my sister went to private school. So it's possible. 
You know, the, the the boys didn't get the same treatment, but it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> but, but so so it's possible. So I, I would rather you do that than just be like, I guess I'm just broke. Let me have a bunch of kids and send them all to fucking school in the Bronx. You know what I'm saying? So high school for me, it, it wasn't a fun experience until senior year when I had like a growth spurt and I put on some muscle. Then I started selling selling some weed. So I had some money. I had some height. I could defend myself better. And then girls liked me. So then the, the last wing was a little bit better, you know. But the first three years, I would rather have not not experienced that. If I'm Benny, being honest. Benny was the weed man. Benny was the, was the guy chopping trees in high school, huh? Somebody got somebody <laughs> got to do it. Somebody, somebody got to do it, bro. Yeah, you were that guy. Yeah, yeah bless if you. <laughs> if, you're, if you're a kid in the Bronx and you have on some designer jeans and Jordans on, you getting all the ass. You, no questions asked. You getting all the ass. That's just, yeah. that's how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Zay, what, Zay yeah. What, what about you? Did you did you like high school? What was your high school like? Honestly, bro, uh, uh, that's why I'm listening to you guys because I had a total different experience. No. But but uh, hold on, my uh, you didn't you didn't go to high school in America. I uh, no no uh, my high school was in Syria. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so but cool. you but. Yeah. But you had a good experience, you're saying? A very good experience. I oh. actually miss it so much. It's one of the best years of my life. Best three wow. years of my life. But at the same time, you guys, I was a boring person. I wasn't into partying. I wasn't into drugs. I wasn't into anything. I was just strictly from school to, to the gym and then back home. So uh, I, I, I bodybuilded through the entire high school. You know, I was a legit bodybuilder eating my meals, doing the thing. Wow. And I missed a lot of uh, parties or any social events because I was at the gym, you know. I missed prom because I was hitting back day that day. What? Uh, you know, seriously, dude, I was really committed in, in high school. Uh, and even throughout my college years, I was still... I did the same thing, bro. I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. I skipped prom so I could... I was Because I was competing that weekend. I was like, no, Friday night, not going to work. Hey guys, Wait. I just I just want to share something real quick. I got a new uh -huh. new desk chair. Um, Let's see it. It's it's pretty pretty nifty. Um, oh, that's nice. You just wanted to show off your biceps, bro. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Um, it's got this like little extendo leg rest that I can pull out here and flip up. And now I'm fucking chilling back here. Oh, dude. Man, I'm pretty I'm pretty jealous of that. This this one's pretty comfortable that I got here. Yeah, it's got these little pillows and shit. But so, um, this is like doesn't, a doesn't have that chair. lean back. No, if I lean back in this one, I'm gonna fall back all the way. It's not gonna. Oh be yeah, don't, don't lean back. This is so You're comfy. Yeah. Happy camper. I can't. I can't do the uh, like the leather or the pleather seats because it like my ass sweat accumulates. So I got like a mesh one, and it's pretty comfy. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> actually, that's smart. That's actually, I didn't think about that when I got this one. But, yeah, yeah, two hundred bucks, well spent. <laughs> Uh, one one thing I did leave out is sports. I did. I had a lot of uh, fun playing basketball. I'll say that. That that was oh, like yeah. the highlight. Did you guys, yeah. did you guys play sports too? In, in I was a lacrosse kid actually. Um, nice. That and that was. I know they play that over on the East Coast. Um, they probably don't play it in Syria, is it? Um, no, but, they do not actually. <laughs> the uh, yeah. but yeah, I I played through junior year and then all the you know the mental health shit kind of caught up to me and i was like i, I wasn't in the state to play sports but um but yeah it, it was i was decent at it but it was it was weird i wasn't like passionate about getting good at it in the same way that like i am with bodybuilding so like i wouldn't go and you know practice on my own and you know practice shooting and, and all that shit um you know just because i wanted to be better uh, I was on this travel team where like a lot of the kids from the West coast would like go to tournaments on the East coast and they try to get looked at and recruited for like, you know, colleges over there. Cause all the good colleges are on the East coast for lacrosse. And, you know, you're not getting scholarships for that. You'd be lucky if you play, um, as a West coast guy. Um, so like, I was like, why am I doing this? You know? And then I went into bodybuilding, which is, you know, arguably even, worse as far as like making money or worthwhile but yeah <laughs> have, you, have you felt passionate about anything before bodybuilding like in that same way or or no because i felt the same way kind of like i did like soccer and i hated that and like you know tried other sports team sports 
I was I kind of was okay with uh, track and field, obviously, because I was doing all the running beforehand. I thought I would beat people, but I sucked, and it just it was like I think the individualness of the sport definitely plays a part in that. But no, I can't yeah. really say I um I was ever quite as like in it yeah. as I am with bodybuilding. But the other thing is like you know this is such an all encompassing thing. You know, it's like dieting and training. It's like 24 seven, right? Yeah. Um, other sports, it's like you don't necessarily have to do that. So yeah. you can look at your whole life differently. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Stu, it, it Stu said it perfectly. Cause I, I felt like mentally I was just as passionate about basketball as bodybuilding, but it's not the same because bodybuilding is you're planning out years in advance, right? Like, Zay knows what he's going to do in the next two years. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're planning out months and weeks ahead and years ahead. Whereas basketball, when, if I wasn't playing, I wasn't even thinking about basketball. When I wasn't playing, I was just in a different world. But uh, bodybuilding is so all-encompassing that every day, all day, all year revolves around it. So you're, you're watching bodybuilding podcasts. You're on bodybuilding podcasts. You're having your meals. You're talking about bodybuilding at the gym. Everything is bodybuilding. Basketball, you can't, you play basketball. You can't escape it. Yeah, you can't escape it when you're a bodybuilder, right? You, you, yeah. Even if, even if you try to, you just don't because if you actually truly love it, like you just kind of always stay around bodybuilding. When, yeah. when, you're, when you're when you're doing team sports, there's, there's definitely a big difference because I I remember I, I felt passionate about doing like like uh, paintball, it's just like extreme and stuff like that. But you know, you, you get together and you like you practice, but like when you're on your own, like what are you really gonna do? Like play by yourself? Like clean your gun? Nothing. Like, I would do that stuff, but you can't really do anything to get yourself that much better. You have to show up mm -hmm. with your boys and practice, and that's how you do it. With with bodybuilding, it's it's all you all the time. Yeah, basketball. It was all fun. It was like something that I enjoyed doing. But with bodybuilding, it's not just fun. It's like you have like you you almost become addicted to it. It's almost like yeah. you 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 love it even when you hate it. We love it so much, and it's so much fun for us that we, but we put so much pressure on it. Sometimes we make it not fun for us. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, you know? <laughs> Whereas, if I was playing basketball and I'm like, "This is this is not very fun," I would just stop playing. But with bodybuilding, even when it's not fun, you just continue to do it until it becomes fun again, right? It's like it's, it's this, supposed to not be fun. Exactly. You, know, you know, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like oh, it's, I, it's just, everything is terrible and nothing is convenient with bodybuilding. It always has to be inconvenient. It's yeah. Sometimes, sometimes like guys who like let's say bodybuilders who used to play like football or basketball, they're like, yeah, football is way harder than bodybuilding because we have to do this, we have to do that. And I'm like, well, you must have a complete different, a complete different experience with dieting and bodybuilding because <laughs> it is not even close. Because you're, 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 yeah. you're, I'm, I'm eating pasta and pizza and all this shit. I have energy for, for, for days. So I don't care how much practice I have to do. I don't care if I'm being tackled by people. I don't care how, you know, how much energy I'm, I'm uh, putting out because I, I have so much food that I feel great. Like nobody's playing yeah. basketball. Like, oh my God, I feel like shit. I got to sit down. You feel great. You're fucking 180 pounds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't, I don't know those football, players that was, like, yeah. Those guys get beat up, and a lot of them have painkiller problems. And some of these dudes are playing games in, during Ramadan, and they're not. You know, they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bodybuilders got to do that, too, sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Irving, yeah. I know. It's a good point. Yeah. Poor Zaid. It doesn't. <laughs> do you do Ramadan? Me? <laughs> no. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm not a Muslim, but I'm the, this Muslim on this podcast. Yeah. You're the most yeah, Muslim okay. person here, okay? Yeah. So I'm a Lakeum brother. <laughs> no, I stopped doing that stuff a long yeah. time ago. When did you stop? What age? Uh, twenty. Oh yeah, you're you're the most Muslim person podcast. Uh, for me, I, I stopped as a teenager. Basically, mm. after you I come, I came to America. Movie. I I knew this is this is a different world, and I was living in a different planet. You know. That, so to come in here, open my eyes to a lot of, not a lot of other things, but it's just the real life, I guess. You know, when you have no restriction, let's just say that. When you have yeah. less restrictions, you have clear vision. Yeah. But you got to place them on yourself. That's the uh, difficult part. And a lot of people suck at that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's hard to explain that to your mom when she's super religious because they don't understand you live in a different world from them. 
I don't I don't live in the world you 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 grew up in. It's it's a different world. I of can't. Course, bro, I mean, if I fast, I will disappear. I'm already small. If I yeah. fast, I will disappear. You know, and that's he, not conducive he said it. to my. We living. didn't do it. We didn't say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I have to like it's, it's 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 kind of my job to eat my fucking food, right? And yeah. I consider it a job because I, I eat when I'm not hungry, you know. Uh, so I, it, it's a conf there's a conflict there. So yeah, I can't be doing I, it anyway. I would get physically sick because, mind you, in high school, I'm playing basketball, I'm playing football, and I'm I'm fasting. Just think about that. I'm lifting weights. I'm playing basketball, football. I'm practicing. I'm getting hit. I'm, and I'm fasting. So by the end of the day, I will get a migraine. I will get like blind spots, couldn't see, throw up, and then possibly pass out. Think about that. that, that, that that's ridiculous. That, that don't make sense. So uh, I just couldn't do it anymore because my body couldn't, I couldn't take it. You know what I'm saying? For the people so, who don't know, it was, it's supposed to make you feel like the poor people who don't have any access to any uh, water or food. Oh, you, so you can't drink water food. either. No. You can't do nothing. Yeah. 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 No. Yeah, I was it's talking. Yeah. To, yeah, it's super wild. My my stepbrother is Muslim, and you know we've been stepbrothers since I was seven years old. But he didn't practice when he was younger, obviously. But now he's practicing as an adult. And I just ask him because I, I know um, Hassan Mustafa does it as well, and he actually follows a lot of Hassan's stuff for that reason to get like tips and motivation and stuff because he lifts and he wants to be in shape. But it's super challenging because let's say you let's say for us, right? Like we wake up in the morning. You, you want to have some coffee. Well, you can't have coffee. You can't have tea either. You can't have water either. So you can't take your pills. So what do you do? You can't have your meal. So you have to, so basically what he was explaining, and you guys can probably explain it too from your experience, but it's, it's crazy because you have to basically give up like all of your normal habits in order to kind of like reconnect with them in a way. Is that true, Zay Beatty? Like, can you guys maybe yeah, explain yeah. that better? Yeah, it's all because they, they want to make you feel what the poor feel like. Uh -huh. So I do the opposite. I keep my lifestyle and I find a poor person and I help them out. So we're mm -hmm. both winning. It doesn't have to be that way. That's, so nice, that's my man. mentality. That's, that's good. I, I like that. I mean? Yeah. 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 Why do I have to stop cool, drinking yeah. water when now we can have water for all of us? This is such like you opened a can of worms with me. I used to talk like this with, you know, with my brother because he would always have shit to say to me. I'm like, we're, this is 1400 years ago, dude. Now it's 1,400 Zay. years later. We have access of, for food and water for everyone. I've never met someone literally has no access to water. I've they'll, never they'll met be dead. Him. Yeah, not in the U.S. They'll, at least. All of the people that in the U.S.A., they have definitely access to some drinking water and some type of food. Honestly, yeah. dude, a lot of homeless people come to the nutrition store where I work, and I just give them uh, lean body RTDs, you know, yeah. something to drink maybe some protein while you're at it, you know? So uh, any place you go, you ask for some help, you're going to get help. Maybe not, not the first, uh, not the first door, but the second, third door would help you, you know? Not so. to, not to get too into religion, but this is, this is kind of the disconnect, right? Religion has a great place in the world. It teaches a lot of people morals and discipline and the whole nine. But when you go buy a book that was written at a complete different time in history, the same rules don't apply fucking yeah. centuries later because it's a different world we live in. How the fuck, how the fuck I, I'm going to pray five times a day when my rent is $3,000? Mm -hmm. The fuck? I, I got to be making fucking money, motherfucker. Like, I, 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 don't, I, I don't have the time. Yeah, like, you, better, you, better, you better be praying yeah. five, five times a day for more money then. Exactly, you know? <laughs> so it... it it's just a different time and age. Like I gotta have all my meat blessed and shit by the imam, and it's like where, where the fuck I'm, I'm gonna go? So uh, I, I got, I gotta drive fucking uh, fifty miles to like, it, it, what the fuck are we to talking? Buy about? halal meat, you mean? That's what I'm saying. I gotta drive fifty miles to buy halal meat. It, it, it just doesn't make sense in this time and era, you know. Now you can follow it in a way that works for you. I know Muslims that pray like in their car. Yeah, they'll just pray like this in the car. Nice, you yeah. know, cool. If if that helps you out in your life, dope. But this is a different time. It's a this is a different life. You know what I'm saying? And like really I said, is. religion, religion yeah. had a great place teaching a lot of people morals. But some of us already have the morals instilled in us. Some of us, we already have the morals. Some of us, you know. Yeah. So I don't, I, I don't yeah. know. But 
It's yeah. It just reminds. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that show, uh, Superstore, but there's like a skit where there's a, there's a Muslim guy and he has to go and he does his praying, of course. And there's like there's like one like office, and they're like, yeah, like you can use that. And then another one of them, uh, the, uh, the the coworkers, moves into that office, so he just keeps on going into her office to pray. It's like it's kind of like well, you could really just pray almost anywhere. Is that right? Like, does it have to be tiny thing? anywhere? Like, anywhere. oh, it's like no, no, no. I need this room because I have to be facing west. And it has to be at noon, and it has to be right now, and I have to be like standing on your desk. It's like you know, you, you can still follow your religion without being like completely absurd and like intruding on other people's lives, right? I totally yeah. agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But like my mom, I would never tell her all of this because her brain can't. But I'll just be like, "Yep, I'm doing my prayers, mom." Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, all all of my prayers. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm my mom thinks I'm too. natural, bro. <laughs> she said, "Don't tell him nothing." <laughs> you gotta keep it going. Keep it going. Yeah. My mama, she might listen to this podcast. She's commented on it before. Oh. Really? I, 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 I don't think she knows what the fuck. We, I don't know. I don't think she knows what the fuck we're talking about. There's no way she can't. She yeah. can't comprehend what the fuck we're talking about. My mom definitely does not watch this podcast. Thank God. I hope not. Yeah. All right. What time is it? That's actually pretty good that she doesn't. Yeah. yeah. At, at, at first, she, she used to comment on my Instagram like, "Hey, hey, son, like you, you should, you shouldn't show your, you shouldn't take off your pants like that." And then I, I ended up blocking her. Yeah. <laughs> you blocked <Yeah>. your mom, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That's so funny. God damn. <laughs> every picture, Shut bro. Up. <laughs> bro, every picture, she's like, "Oh, you look great, son," but. Please put your shirt on or something like that. I'm like, nah, this is it. This is the last show. Blocked. <laughs> <laughs> Just text me, man. It's okay. Just text me. All right. Let's see. You guys want to get into questions? Sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know what else. Please unblock your mom, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> Bro, she, she don't want to see it. I'm going to slide in baby's mom's DMs. They're out there. <laughs> I don't. It's like I. I don't want to. If she don't want to see it, then uh, she don't got to see it. She probably cooks really well. I she mean, does. Yes. Yeah. She does cook well. I might tell just us ask about her the for African food. <laughs> How the African food for your last cheat meal? <laughs> Did you get That's, it or no? It was good. It, it was good actually. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm glad they enjoyed it, dude. I, I, I did enjoy it. We got the ox, oxtail curry or what? No, it was uh, ugosi and fufu. Then we uh, we had jello so, rice. Bro, those are made up words. What the fuck? Yeah, I've never no, heard no, that. no. Just say what are those? <laughs> Nigerian food. Nigerian food. Huh. You know. Huh? It it was good though. It was actually good. You, you could just say anything and we'd believe you. Is that a real uh... <laughs> <laughs> Ask Ken. Ask Ken next podcast about Ugosi. All right. You guys ready for questions? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hit. You sure? Oh, I, I, I want to know. Like, is that is that even a is that a meat, a vegetable, a carb? Like, what <laughs> like, what is that, dude? How does this fit uh, into my meal plan? <laughs> fufu, fufu is like, do you make it with cornmeal? I believe. I think some people make it with yuca, and uh, the sauce. I'll be. I don't know what the fuck is in that is in that ugosi soup. I'm not sure. It looks like there's some spinach in it. <laughs> Then, it, it, you know, <laughs> it's like so much flavor though it's a, it's a lot of flavor but it doesn't look like it would have all that flavor it kind of looks like a little mushy you're like hmm but it tastes really good it's just i like I mushy know. food bro like oh, yeah. uh yeah Fucking, <laughs> like lebanese food you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, i guess that's not really mushy but like excuse me like indian food go to an indian buffet you regret it afterwards right but like yeah you yeah, just pour yeah. all the curry sauce and the rice and all the chicken like Dude, so but you can just like, it, with, you can just eat it with bread, basically like mop it all yeah. up. That shit's so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, did he? Oh, you could eat it with a spoon, but you know, real Bengalis don't do that. My step family is like they always like oh shit, it. dude. And it's like remember <laughs> the thing we're talking about. I don't remember if it was it might have been another podcast. I don't know, but we, I know we were talking before about being annoyed when people are eating food. And dude, when you're eating with your hands and you're eating that kind of food, the slurping, oh, is, 
Anyways, anyways, anyways. <laughs> your, your, your fingers get stained, too, by the food. But you got to get yeah. it with your hands. It's the tradition. Yeah, the walls, too. Like, the kitchen was, like, yellow. <laughs> good food, though. Like, really, really good, man. Like, no, it's literally it's curry good. powder on the walls. <laughs> yeah. The that is the most Indian. Well, you said they're Bengali? They're, yeah, from, from Bangladesh. So, yeah, Bengali, oh, I guess. Okay. Yeah, Bengali. Close enough. Yeah. All right. Does I gotta read these questions in my head before I read it aloud? Does huh, the smoking weed so much make you feel like you can't use it for stress? That's me right now. Uh, does that anybody smoke? I think it can kind of turn into your new normal. Like I don't know if I've oh, ever wait. talked to Zay when he was sober. I wonder what he's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. sober, bro. A joint doesn't do much, you know. Yeah, not exactly, yeah. not anymore. Yeah, you <laughs> just proved my point, dude. I, I mean, you guys have seen me when I was uh, to, uh, in Dubai. I was uh, with no wheat out there for two, two and a half weeks. I recall you were kind of tweaking out. Yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> you were, <laughs> you were <laughs> much tweaking more out? stressed out, <laughs> actually. <laughs> no, okay, no. If I'm no, being honest. Yeah. I, I I try to use it in spurts when I feel like I don't want to say I, when I feel like I need it when I feel like uh, it's gonna be the most beneficial. I just don't want to do it year round because I start to get like Stu said. I, I start to feel a little bit like used to it to the point that it actually sometimes can make it harder for me to deal with stress. If I smoke weed for a full year and then now I take a break, now with my un unhigh brain, stress kind of stresses me out even more. You know what I'm saying? But uh, right now, I've been smoking quite a bit just because it helps me get through the day. Because when I get really stressed, it makes me shut down. And then I don't text anybody. I don't call anybody. So it kind of helps me just relax and get to my clients and be peaceful. And I kind of mm -hmm. want it right now. But uh, I think I think for some, I think I also know people who smoke weed every day for the last 20 years. And they're completely fine. No, nothing. So depends on a person you know so yeah. you got to know yourself yeah. you do have do you smoke yeah i try do you to smoke avoid where? like put i try to put it off as long as it possibly can in prep so because i usually use it to sleep at the end it's when i really need it like i i used i took like a hit off of a dab pen last night just to knock myself out because i've been having trouble sleeping the last few days and it did the trick and i don't want to do it again tonight you know i got a good night's sleep i feel good so um yeah, when you when you're the the thing is, I get what I've noticed myself doing in the past is like when I start doing it like every night, uh, and not even during the day, but just like every night, it it turns into like a form of escapism. Like I usually I notice I do it when I'm not necessarily having the best time in life. Uh, yeah, me and too. Relationships are stressed out. Work is stressful. I'm just like I'm just trying to shut it out. And I know that that's not like escapism is not good. Uh, Slippery it, slope. it can be good, but like using a drug to do that mm. is kind of risky. And I like, I, I'll be honest, I like drugs, right? So, like, if I if I open that doorway for me at least, that is a gateway to like, oh, what else could I use to like feel different and like. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah. I I try to like minimize yeah. that. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Stu, because I'm the same way. I'm like an addict. Like anything that I like, I'll just like it so much that I'll just keep doing it and so yeah it's the same thing with weed and and even uh like last prep I, I i didn't smoke at all and even when i couldn't sleep i'm like no no i'm not gonna i'm not gonna smoke because i just want to be clean clean and maybe i should have because i think it's smart like you're using it as a tool to help you during a time that you need it instead of you know and baby you, you said that like you're just going to use it because i'm stressed today and i need something to rely on it and i've been there and then that's the problem is the problem is is now that it's, oh, wow, that really worked. Now I feel real good. Now, bang, I can rely on that. And it's a go-to again. And then, like you said, Stu, it's like, well, then what if that's not enough? It's like, well, I just I just added the trend, and now the weed's not coming me down, and now I need to fuck in something else. And it's like, I, I just, at that point, it just, it's not helping me. But it, it can, or, I mean, the thing about drugs, like all drugs, and I love drugs too. That's why we're fucking bodybuilders, and we have that propensity to want to use drugs. And especially when we we can figure out, okay, was this drug actually giving us 
more benefit or is it giving us less benefit? You know, pros and cons. You know, Zade, if, if you find that it helps you and it makes you feel good and, and you're happy about the fact that you use weed or to help you and all that, you have to feel good about your fucking decisions, man. Because there, there's a point where if I'm using a substance like weed or, you know, anything else, if I feel like, oh man, like I want to not do it today and I feel like I have to, then I'm like, damn, like that's, that's something that I have to work on. That's a weakness. That's addiction. That's addiction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah it's, I mean, it's harder to notice that in the moment than you realize though. To actually zoom I mean, out, look third person like, oh, this is becoming a habit, you know? Yeah. You gotta, you, you gotta be self-aware enough to to know to know to be honest with yourself to know why you're doing something yeah and i could 100 percent say that i smoke weed for all the wrong reasons i literally smoke weed when i'm stressed which is the worst thing you can do you know now when i do it for sleep i'm actually a little bit more comfortable with that because that because that that does happen in prep i get to a point where i can't sleep but Right now, I'm smoking just out of stress. You know, my stress is a little bit higher than normal, so it kind of brings me brings me a little bit down. You know, saying yeah. um, I just feel like I know Mike Tyson says I, I'm a nicer person on weed, and I get what he means. But damn, he's been smoking every day for the last thirty years. That, that's a lot. Yeah, he, I don't know. He, ain't, he ain't quitting. <laughs> you know, what I'm that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I I get what you're saying because I feel like I'm generally a nice person or you know or polite person, but I, I have my moments. If I'm stressed out, I'm not that nice, man. I gotta be honest with you, you know, at least not for my standards. So I I would rather be 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 a nice guy personally, but it's yeah. life, you know. You got to be some kind of balance. You know? yeah. Yeah. It helps, you know. It's like the, the beer after a long day. It helps uh, <laughs> take the edge off. Yeah, it's a I, gateway I, I, to alcoholism. Yeah. But for what? some reason, like stoners get a pass because it's just like their lifestyle. But yeah. like if, yeah. if you if you have a beer after work and that turns into six beers and it's like every single day, you are an alcoholic at that point, right? Yeah. But like, uh, I just have to add one thing when it comes to marijuana specifically, it's associated with being lazy a lot. You know, I think if you are a productive person, yeah. you're making money, you're healthy, you have a, a, a plan for yourself, you're going through yeah. your life, adding weed to that equation would be a good thing. That's how I see my life. But I'm not relying on it, honestly. You know, it's I can stop anytime I want, but yeah. why would I stop? Whoa. I'm having a good time. Yeah, never heard said, that line before. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can <laughs> stop it. I'm what? just saying it's not her. I'm being productive uh, and doing, doing, taking care of things, and it's been I working. So uh, why fix it? You know, I don't. I don't think it makes you lazy at all. I, I, I think a it lot of lazy, lazy people. It makes me oh, lazy. Yeah? yeah. Okay. For bro. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Some people say I, that. Yeah. I, I understand. It's like that's not everybody though. So, I think. I think a lot of lazy people just happen to smoke weed as well. Because I know people who are just lazy people, but they just so happen to smoke weed, right? Um, now, for me, when I'm stressed, I become less productive because I start to shut down. I'm like, uh, I'll procrastinate and push everything back. When I smoke, I actually become more productive because my stress level is lower. So now I can relax and get the job done. So yes, sir. I don't... Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what I think. That's exactly so, the the my it's thought process. Yeah, it's it's so different for everybody, isn't it? Like yeah, like yeah. how how marijuana works with different people. Like everybody has a, a very different yeah. reaction to it. Some people some people get anxious and paranoid. That's why some oh. people. I know yeah. a lot of people that oh I, I can never smoke weed. I I, I, lit, I lose my I lose my mind. I get super anxious yeah. and paranoid. That's happened to me before. I don't know why. I don't know if it was a strain. I think it's just where you're at mentally. Like, uh, it was post-show, and I kind of had, like, a post-show kind of funk going on. Mm. And then I tried to add weed on top of that, and I just got lower. And I was, yeah, fuck, yeah, fuck that. Yeah. I fucked that. So, yeah. yeah, you gotta be... These are all drugs. These are all drugs. Same, just like steroids. A lot of bodybuilders say steroids. Ah, oh, no. It's fine. It, it's, it's, it's never black or white. It's somewhere down the middle. It's how you use it. So, be careful how you use it. Don't mm. Don't think it's too safe. Don't think it's too dangerous. It's somewhere down the middle. So use it properly. Yeah. You know, use it. Use it all properly. Yeah. Right, Stu. Right. Don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> I would say the only, the only drug that I didn't like 
was was LSD. Whoa. Mm. Yeah. What was that experience like? And and, and and I didn't like booze. You know, booze, cocaine, LSD, they all sucked for me. It just the way my body was. With LSD, it was really weird, man, because I was at a party and someone gave me a pill. And you know what? When someone gives you a pill, you're going to probably think it's ecstasy or something that's going to make you feel good and party. LSD is different, dude. It's so different. It's like a 14-hour fucking mind fuck. That's you don't want to be in a... Yeah, and it just didn't stop. And that's what I hated about it because I wasn't prepared for it. And they didn't even tell me what it was until after. And I'm like, Ooh. yeah, what is this? So like, oh, yeah, that was it. That was an LSD. And I'm like, okay, this is crazy. Oh. <laughs> yeah. You talk, about being, talk about being paranoid. You know, the one the one thing that I remember about that experience was that I remember coming home after the party and everybody else passed out. And I'm like, there's no chance I'm sleeping for, for probably another four or five hours. So I'm walking the dog got super paranoid i really thought that every like mailbox and like i thought mailboxes had cameras and they knew that i was like on lsd and i thought like dogs knew and like every and i was just like walking around the block right yeah. and then yeah it was just and i saw these amish people because there was an amish community and they're all just being really <laughs> nice I, like they were all being really nice it's like, hello and they're all walking outside i'm like oh my god like they know they know <laughs> they know to me yeah Oh man! I mean, if I if I even smoke weed in public, I start thinking everybody's like, "Oh, look at that guy! He's so high!" And I start it makes me a, a little bit paranoid in public. That's why I don't I don't smoke weed in public. It's it's you set know? and setting, man. Like when you're taking drugs, you have to have the right intention. You got to be in the right place in your mind, and also the environment you're in. Like all these make a huge difference. Huge difference. Yeah, yeah. Me me and Compton had a good time in Vegas. High as hell. I bought a bunch of weed. We was just high as fuck. Do you see weed weed now, me. Robin, or no? I, I'm I'm taking it out, man. Yeah, no, I, 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 I I stopped smoking weed. I didn't smoke any weed for the New York prep, Toronto, and like a few months afterwards. And then one time I had it, and I was just like, oh yeah, now I'm just gonna have it for the rest of the off season. And like I said, it's been hard to fucking quit, you know. So I just I try to I try to go cold turkey, and it's it's hard to do. So I taper it off. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Nice. it's it's an mm. addict mindset. Like I've been, I've been, I've been addicted. Basically, like I said, I, almost anything I've ever touched, like just fucking, me, except for the three that I told you. Yeah, and it sucks, dude. You know, but you just have to know that's how you are. If that's how you are, you're gonna be like that with everything. It took me a while to figure that out, but Antoine's the same way, and you know, he he's talked about that a lot. So yeah, 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 yeah. 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 All right. You didn't you okay. didn't like cocaine, Rob? You wouldn't nah, find it wasn't, wasn't fun enough. Wasn't fun enough. Yeah. I, I got I can't lie, man. I really like uppers. Like yeah. especially when I'm in prep. Like it's this is like the worst time you could ever think to like go and party or something, right? But like I guess like you just want some sort of stimulus, some, some dopamine. Yeah, yeah, like, let's, you, yeah. let's go do Almost. some shit, you know? And, I agree. I agree. Like, I can't eat, but I could do drugs. And I fortunately yeah. I don't know where to find drugs. <laughs> so I don't do them, but I don't know. It, it's good. It just kind of pass through my head every once in a while. I'm like, mm, that that's, that's the problem when you, when you're, when you're 21 and you're, and you move to Toronto, it's like, yeah. <laughs> dude, like they're just, they're literally, I'm not even kidding you with s some of the clubs in some of those areas, some of the nights I'll be walking down the street and there would be someone offering me cocaine. And I'm not kidding you. There'd be fucking Coke on his nose. And he's just like, here, you want a bag? You want to try like, that's how fucking messed up downtown Toronto can be. And, you know, just you're a kid and you're just like, oh, yeah, like girls and guys and like a lot of fitness people would go and do this stuff, too. Right. Obviously. So mm -hmm. the, the one the reason why the reason why I didn't like cocaine, I'll be honest, is because my my best friend had an addiction to cocaine that he couldn't stop. And he died because he was basically high while he was driving a motorcycle. Whoa. Whoa. And you know what the weird the weird thing about that is his name was Stu. So Whoa. Right. Whoa. Stu. No, dude, so no, no motorcycles, no, no cocaine motorcycle, for you, no Mr. Mr. Yeah, well, Sutherland. No. I kind of start yeah. thinking about both those things when I'm prepping for shows. So no. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Coke. I mean It's like calling it's a calling, it's like Stu. Come on, come have some fun. <laughs> I think I think Coke is a little more sinister. I, I've I've done it once, I think. And it was like 
Oregon Pacific Northwest Coke. So it'd probably been stepped on like fucking crazy at that point. Who knows what it was? Um, MDMA though is, I, I like that. And you don't feel too good. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, in, like you go to a rave or something, like it's fun. It's, but yeah. that's like a once a year thing, if that for me. It's every yeah. couple of years at this rate. Yeah. See, that, that's, that was a problem because I liked it so much. I did it every day for a while. Ooh, like, that, that'll oh, fuck you up. That'll that's fuck me up. Yeah. I was, fuck- yeah. See, but fuck your brain chemistry. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Well, if you if you like, well, MDMA, I'm very happy that you're very aware and you took control of the situation. This speaks mm-hmm. a lot about your self uh, uh, self will. You know, your yeah. your it's, your it's wild because I remember, I, I remember even being like I'd be like in a setting like that and kind of being like uh, almost like an introvert still, um, and being like an observer and being like knowing people and then observing them, like watching people like mix a whole bunch of drugs and just being totally out of their mind. Or watching people do like a ton of MDA, MDMA, and then like they get like a weird like slurred speech, and I'm just I'd always be seeing this stuff happening to people, and I'm like, hmm. So these drugs are pretty serious, but like I also really like them, so I was always trying to tiptoe that line of like, like drug use is like it's like bodybuilding in a way. Like this is what Antoine kind of related to. It's like you want to push the extreme. If you're an extreme, like you fucking want to max out. It's like, that's how you, you know, with like a gateway, like you're saying, Stu, it's like you go weed and then it's like, okay, now I'm, I'm in the mood for something a little harder. And then you work up to what? Then you get to your fucking PR and now you're on math. It's like, yeah, I've, oh. I've made, I made it to the top. It's like, but that's, that's where it goes, man. Like where, where else do you see drug addicts go? Like, they yeah, just, I could they go, right. They go through a, a process until they're rock bottom, but there's nothing or left. Or they're dead. Yeah. Or they're I mean, dead. You die before that point. That's what I was saying. Like, Friends are just dying left and right, and I appreciate that, Zade. That I and I'm fortunate and grateful that I did have like mentors and, and people that actually did help me and support me too. Because even like I said, dude, one time I remember fucking coming home after club, fucking geeing out on the way home, I fell down my apartment steps. It was like a, a basement walkout, and I fell like all the way down the steps, and I had to work in two hours. My buddy, oh, my like buddy, dude, he, he dragged me into my house, turned my alarm on. And just left me there. And I woke up, fucking went to work. And that I was nice of him. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Wait. Nah, dude. Wait. G and out. So yeah. you were taking GHB? Oh, yeah. We oh. Now, that is a drug that I've never tried, but I really want to try. I, you got, still get it? I, yeah, just I know it's very with popular it. with bodybuilders because it's like pretty similar to alcohol and its effects, but it doesn't really give you a hangover, but it's highly yeah. addictive. We, we, well. we can definitely, we can talk more on after pod because I don't want to promote that stuff because you come to, yeah, no, you come to Toronto and there's like salesmen for it. They're literally like, Oh, I, I was, I was so naive that I believed that it was a bodybuilding supplement. No. Yeah. People, well, cause yeah, it, it it, like GHB, like somehow, like there's some mechanism where it increases growth hormone secretion or some dumb shit like it that. Does. Yeah. It so does. like people, you know, just like with Nubain, there was some other crap just like with Nubain. Yeah. Uh, it's just an excuse to take drugs. Right. And Wait, we're like that. So they had, they had GHB at GNC. Was that true? At one point, <laughs> as far as we know. I think they did. I've heard that before. Yeah. Yeah. I did hear that. Because yeah. GHB is like, that's the original one, but there's like various different analogs of it as well. Which, yeah. And the analogs are so dangerous. <laughs> yeah. And they can oh, be yeah. like converted into GHB or yeah. they can be taken on their own, slightly different effects. Yeah. Um, and it's like, there's a bunch of ways that people have tried to tweak the molecule to get around import restrictions and, mm. um, Again, wasn't I'm, it supposed to put you in REM sleep like almost immediately? It yeah, knows, yeah. I Which is so. what do you think? What does that sound like? That sounds like you know date rape or something like that. You know what I mean? Like you're just out. So mm-hmm. what what GHB does essentially? It's kind of like it. The the way I explain it is like it, it really works on the GABA receptors because it kind of like blankets your entire brain, and uh, it can feel like alcohol in that way where it can reduce inhibitions and stuff like that. It can also feel like you're getting a release of serotonin and dopamine like kind of like you would with mdma so it's like a very very good feeling um and it does release growth hormone uh that's definitely proven by science and and so and yes it will definitely help you fall asleep and it is a prescribed medication um uh night night cam i forget the name of the prescription but um it is prescribed for narcolepsy so it is a 
a legitimate uh, pharmaceutical drug that you can take and get prescribed, and it does have uses. Okay, now the downside, the huge downside for bodybuilders, it elevates your prolactin like crazy. Like crazy. Really? Like wow. it shoots it through the roof. So you get, I think it's like a 13-fold increase in growth hormone or something, your natural growth hormone. Cool, love that shit. And you feel like, you know, feel like you took some growth hormone. You can feel it. But then you also, the prolactin is like 50 times. So I would always be seeing these these guys like GHB heads or whatever you want to call them. They'd be always like there like with their fucking gynecomastia. I'm like, why do all these guys have yeah. gyno? And then I started researching. I'm like, what's going on? And I found research that said that it's the prolactin. So that's like five dollars. That's insane. Oh, it's wild. Yeah, go look wow. it up. Yeah. Right? I got okay. to be honest. I got to be honest. It, it sounds great to me. Sounds like a great yeah. drug. I mean, like if I would, if I were to decide between going out for a night of drinking or taking GHB, I would probably take GHB. The problem is, where are you getting it from? What is it dosed at? Because I know that, like they they just give you like syringes filled with the stuff, right? That's what I've heard. It's just like it's just a liquid. You don't know what the concentration of it is. And you have to be yeah. like very careful, titrate up your. It's you know, you it do. sounds so, yeah, you know what a shot okay. of it's, it's such a mess. Does. Yeah, you're so right. It's such a mess here because people will bring it to clubs and they won't have the right doses. For me, I had experience with different analogs. I had one that was GBL or something like that, and it basically just made me pass out instantly. And apparently, I beat people up. <laughs> so, nice. that's my, <laughs> okay. that's my yeah, it was, it was so crazy. And then what I see happening all the time is people that just bring their G, like people will bring like a five hour energy, like full of it, which is like so much, like you just, everybody's going to overdose if you finish it all, but you'll just be sharing it all night with people and people just take it and they combine it with alcohol. And then you just start seeing people passing out. That's basically what it comes down to. Cause you, you get oh, to a shit. point and, and this is like every drug. And I was having a discussion with my client today who likes tequila and he's like man like when i get to that certain point when i have like that tequila buzz like i want to just keep it going and i'm like hell yeah of course you do because that's where it feels the best that's the sweet spot and if you try to do that with basically anything it's like you get to that point where you just you're gonna buzz out with ghb you just pass out and you cannot control it so mm -hmm. i've seen people like literally just i've seen one of my buddies took off his pants and passed out you know what I mean? So it's almost like you lose control over your entire uh, fucking body. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if, if anybody was thinking about it, hopefully these stories have discouraged yeah. you. Um, yeah. That's, that's scary as fuck, honestly. Yeah. People, like, the mean, thing is, is like, like, yeah, it doesn't matter if we talk about it because people are going to do it or going to do it regardless. The yeah, thing yeah. is, is that if anything, if you're going to do it, just fucking be careful with it, man. Like with anything, right? Like, and you're right. You got to know, like, is this a good source? And you know, what? like, you don't need to lecture people. You can do whatever the fuck you want at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, I, you know? I'm not very experienced taking drugs, but like the last time I did, the guy, the, the, I was there with a bunch of friends, which was great having a bunch of people support you. But also, like, the guy who got it for us was very experienced and like, you know, kept on telling us drink water, take breaks from the rave, like, you know, don't be a moron, right? And like had a good night as as a result, you know. If I, I could have totally fucked that up if I just done it on my own. Yeah, and there's and there's yeah, definitely. Last thing I want to say on that is my experience because I was from 21 to 25, 24, 21 to 24. I just partied my ass off. I had basically nothing to really like lose at that point. I just like whatever. I didn't care about my life. I just wanted to party. It was all good. I don't regret any of that, but to balance it out that's why i tell i tell guys like bodybuilders and stuff that are the torontonians that are here and they're they're big bodybuilders that party because they party often they party like quite a bit especially during the summertime i just tell these guys like just don't just don't don't do it like that you know Stu, you go out once a year cool man but if you're again people in toronto they party pretty hard and consistently and there's a, there's a group of them and they all go together and they're all competitors and they all push and you know they want to get pro cards and i just say like What's your goal, man? Because if your goal is to like be a pro, then you have to like cut that out for a bit. Because that's what I had to do. I cut yeah. it out. I made that decision. Like I'm gonna go pro. And if you don't want to do that, you say like like I would just want to like live my life and I want to enjoy stuff. Then that's great. Then do that. But I don't think you should push both extremes because it's not gonna work out well for you, man. If if best case scenario, you're probably not gonna win your show. Worst case scenario, use your imagination. So that's all I'm gonna say on that. Well said, dude. Well said.
I, I think that's enough drug talk. <laughs> Way too but much. Way too that much. Being, that being said, it sounds like uh, Robin is the guy to talk to if, if I want to get some GHB. Holy shit. <laughs> Different life, dude. <laughs> yeah. I know, right? During during prep, do you guys ever have the urge to have sex? Depends how many weeks out you are. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it'll just be random, like out of nowhere. Like, uh, it, it, it's it's very strange. Like one time, like literally the night before a show last year, like it was. Yeah, yeah. that happens sometimes. Girlfriend was there with me, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that happens <laughs> it was so weird i hadn't gotten tanned up yet fortunately but <laughs> you know yeah. some sometimes it feels physical but i think it's mental because sometimes after prejudging once i get that weight lifted off your back you know what i'm saying that feeling lifted off your back okay prejudging is done when i get relaxed sometimes my sex drive like comes back a little bit it's weird you know yeah so between uh, prejudging and finals, yeah, yeah, because oh, wow. before prejudging, I'm like in like competition mode. I'm like really serious, focused. And after prejudging, mm -hmm. when I relax, and I, I'll probably get like I don't know a burger or a steak or something, some more carbs. Mm -hmm. Then I kind of feel relaxed, and my sex drive kind of peaks out a little bit. But for the yeah. for most, Dude, of I, I remember um, for for my last prep, there was probably like a couple weeks where I just didn't. And then I, I couldn't sleep. Like, you know, you just, those nights you can't sleep. And then as soon as we did, best sleep I ever had that whole prep. I was Dude, like, yeah, it's why, the, why was I neglecting this? Like, what the you fuck? Forget, yeah, you, like, you forget. Yeah, you're like, you don't think yeah. about it at all. And then you're like, oh, yeah, busting nuts makes you sleep like a baby. Makes you feel good. <laughs> you do that. Like, uh, like it, don't treat it as a chore, right? Because that's not how you should look at sex. Exactly. But like, <laughs> you know, you're just not thinking about it. You're not thinking about it. And then you, when you're doing it, it's like, oh, wait, why have I been doing this? Because I've been thinking about food for the last two weeks. That's why. And then yeah, you fall asleep and you're like, oh, that was okay. I should do this more often. <laughs> I don't, I don't even feel like it's like hormonal. I feel like I'm literally just so tired that even if I, even if I'm, if I want to have sex, I can't be bothered because I'm so tired that I almost can't use the energy, you know? No, nah, dude, just get, do some jumping jacks, get the blood pump in. You'll be good. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what, like, I, I was, uh, sometimes you get really tired like that, and you're just like, nah, this sucks, and then you start, and you're like, you get You get that, into it. Yeah, 100%. you get into it, and then all of a sudden, like, like, if you've been exerting like this on the stairs, like, yeah, yeah. this heart rate, you'd feel like crap, but, like, yeah, it's yeah. fun, so. You're right. And all, like, 30 seconds of it, you know, I'm kidding. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> High you intensity know, cardio, like we were talking about earlier. <laughs> Stu's, Stu's right. It's like once you okay, I can say the same thing about working out. Like when, when I'm really lean and low carbs, I go into the gym. I'm like, fuck this. I don't want to fucking work out. I don't want to train legs. You do a couple of sets of extensions. You're like, okay. You do some leg press. You're like, okay, I'm getting into it. By the time you you, you get to squats, you you know you you enjoying it basically. You know, so same with sex. You might just be sitting there miserable, like, fuck this. I don't want to do anything but just rest. And then you get a little bit aroused. You're like, huh? Okay, you know, fuck it. And then as you're doing it, you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm kind of glad this happened. You know, I'm kind of glad this happened. So, like, so you got to get into it sometimes, and then you kind of wake back up. You yeah. kind of remember what the fuck you was missing out on. That yeah. that post workout like or that that post uh, post coital post coital pump. Yeah, that's that's a good one. You know, you go to you go take a piss <laughs> after, and you, you look at you look in the mirror. You're like, oh shit! Like the veins are out now. Like, yeah. That yeah. Was <laughs> That's always good. Yeah. Speaking speaking of sex, you guys ever gave your girl Cialis? No, no. Try it out. Try it out. Maybe. Be like, do you want to take some Cialis? And then yeah. uh, it come back. Just just come back on the next podcast <laughs> after you tried it, and then see see what you have to say. You know, get a fucking uh, uh, one 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 time I think my, my girl was like a day out or two days out. So she had her tan on and I'm just like I was feeling it. I'm like, babe. And she's like, she just looked at me, she's like, Are you fucking out of your mind? And I was like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, like, girls are in a different mindset, you know, like because we, we could get in that mood real quick. She's like, Don't even talk to me while I have a tan on. Like, don't even look at me like that. Like, just stop. <laughs> <laughs> it messes up that tan. It does. She's like, Are you fucking crazy? What are you talking about? I have a tan on. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Be cool though. Be fun. Just saying, just saying. 
it's funny because it's funny because like <laughs> as like a spectator, if I'm watching like a like female competitors compete, I don't look at them that way. It's just like just a body. But if it's somebody you're talking to, some it's, it's weird because something about that tan in the in the bikini kind of into it. You kind of like, oh okay, you know, it, it's different. <laughs> I think it's like it's like there's a certain polish and poise that comes. Yeah. With <laughs> confidence yeah, yeah it's it's everything like, it's like, you they, put they a lot of work out. into this yeah i, like yeah. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like see it, what yeah. you mean but yeah like women on stage like no matter the vision like you you, you don't look at them sexually like it doesn't if you no, it doesn't. The, i'm not saying some guys don't which is fucking mm-hmm. weird but like it's it's not i don't know but I, it's, I've yeah, never, dude, it's like it's like on a stage versus like if it was like your wife and she's tanned up it's different up, it's and, and nice. you're sitting you're sitting on the bed and she's like Doing yeah, your pose. Like, that's I different. Like that. You're like, okay, I can get into this, you know? I like, I like that through, shit. Let's, let's go through these rounds a couple times, babe. I think you need to work on that conditioning from the back. <laughs> but I like that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but like, the yeah, heels, like the makeup, everything, the hair, perfect. You know, like if I'm watching the show, I remember Greg Doucet was like, he was talking about competitors on stage and he was like, he was like, yummy, scrumptious, some shit like that. And I'm like, ah, uh, nah, I, I've never felt. I was like, I've, I've, I've never felt like that watching a, a show. I've never looked at it. I was thinking like, whoa, yeah. It, it does. Did, did nothing he actually do. say that? On yeah. camera, did he yeah. Get his bad face? for saying that? What the he fuck? Got, he got banned, I think, separately. But they, they, they released a statement that he's already banned after he said that. Because if you're a judge, because he, he was a judge, you can't. Ima- bro, imagine somebody judging your girl talking about fucking delicious. Like, nah, yeah, bro. exactly. It puts a bad taste in your mouth. And like for a woman, you really want to be like, you want to hear that? No, even for a guy. Respected. It, like, I mean, fuck. Yeah, like, like I, 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 I've been, uh, I've been like sexually harassed. You know, I'm sure we've all been to a certain point. Like, you post up like a, a bodybuilding stage and you're posing trunks, and someone's like, "Hey, man, like, look at your dick. Like, look how small it is, or whatever. Like, any anything. It's like." Really, like you're just staring at my freaking cock, dude. Like, what about that's weird? Anything else? Like, come on, like, like those those type of people. Like, in my opinion, it's like very low vibrating, man. Like, that's just that's, that's so weird. Professional and and whatever, man. If you've got those thoughts, guess what? Fucking keep it to yourself because that's what a professional yeah. would do. You know, that's weird. Yeah, like, why but, are you focused on my cock, dude? Why? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a lot more impressive things going on here. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> why are you looking at that? <laughs> you know, now take that same girl, and she's your girlfriend. She's in that hotel room. She's doing her little mandatories. That's a whole different vibe. That's nice. That's you know? vibe. But not, but 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 not on stage. On stage, no, 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 no. fuck that. No, no. no. As soon as he gets on stage, it's all good. That, that, that's yeah. what I tell my girl too. Yeah, it's like it, it, we got business time or we got family time. It's different, you know. At the gym, exactly. business. On stage, business. Yeah. business. It's, yeah. In that hotel room, hotel room, a whole different kind of business. You know what I'm saying? Whole Pleasure. different kind of business. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. What did I? Oh, is it? Is it normal to feel like you're living in third person? During prep, I'm seven and a half weeks in, 12.5 weeks left. Third person, dude, if That's I thought a like long person, road ahead of you, if you if, if you're if you're feeling third person with 12 weeks I, left, you might you might need to see a fucking uh doctor. I don't understand the question. What does that mean? Is he what is that, he? That, he crisis? That would be like, uh, yeah, like I'm going through my 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 day. Like Robin's getting on a podcast now. Robin's picking up his phone. Robin's talking to his friends. Like, what? Yeah, you get what? like that eventually. Like you a little robotic. Like you don't feel things in the same way that you usually do. But like, bro, looks looks out. Out? Yeah, bro you're fucked. You're fucked. I, mean, I gotta click. I gotta click on this profile now. Yeah, I'm curious. He, he must be but, shredded. Dude. That's right? what I'm saying. He he must be shredded as fuck. <laughs> what I what I think he means is when you're on prep, sometimes you can sit back and be an observer, rather than rather than like being like like. Do you ever do you guys ever feel like like you're an observer? No, like you yeah, never... yeah. If I'm I, high, I, I felt like that. Yeah, and because that's what I mean is like sometimes you get high on a prep. Like sometimes you do something that, like for example, like if you've ever been like hypo on like a stairmaster, you've gone like hypo. It's kind of like you've you've had a little bit of an outer body experience because you've 
Mm-hmm. That's the way I yeah. felt. Anyway, I've, I've, I've had experiences like that. Yeah. I think that's what he's saying, but like, I don't know. I mean, I don't really understand the question either. I'm trying to decipher I it. see what you mean. Um, I don't know if this is silly to say, but it's it's an altered state all... of your mind a little bit, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Like, Have you ever sat so long for hours and then you stood up uh, suddenly and it drops your blood pressure? So yeah. he's, you almost faint, and maybe that's what he's talking about. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You ever had that feeling before when you're yeah, sitting that, for oh, hours yeah. on the chair and then you suddenly stand up? So mm-hmm. the blood pressure drops a little bit, and then you, you're seconds from fainting. You yeah. feel that way. How how often does this happen, you say? <laughs> Not a Dude, lot. It talk has to your doctor a few about times. it. Yeah, you, you might yeah. have to check your uh, uh, ejection fraction if that keeps happening. <laughs> <Man, cardio. laughs> Dude, I, got this, I don't know. I got a recliner over here where, like, my, it used to be my parents, and they called them the dream killers. Because you sit down in this thing and you will just fall asleep. It's so comfortable. So I'll take naps in it sometimes. It's like 30, 45 minutes. Not even that long, right? I'll pop up and like I can just feel all the blood is sitting in my ass. And I'm like, whoa, I can't even walk right now. I can't feel anything. I'm not like passing out, but it's like, it, that's a good chair, dude. Like, it's so comfortable. I've had one of those chairs yeah. and I'm, I'm jealous that I don't have one anymore. They're, they're, they're close. Like, are you talking about, it's like an old school lazy boy kind of a, like, is it, is it leather? What is it? Yeah. It's like a leather recliner. I think it's like with, 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 the, with the foot rest, like with the foot kick out thing. I got a, I got an ottoman out in front. You of got me. the ottoman one, yeah. right? You got the matching ottoman. Yeah. Those, those yeah. are the ones, bro. Those ones are fucking clutch. Yeah. Okay. Ambition killer. That's what they call it. Yeah. <laughs> that's what my parents called it. Yeah. I, I, I call those uh, prep savers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We we have a lot of questions about the Detroit Pro, but we don't have the answers. Basically, people want to know why there's not more people doing it. I don't. I don't know. Do you, uh, we kind of talked about that when you walked out earlier. Like, do you have yeah. any guesses? I mean, I just think my, that, I just think that guys. I just think that guys. They just weren't ready. They just didn't get ready for it, you know. And it's a weird time because the guys that were ready want to take breaks now. So. When you when you have a new show, guys are usually planning around the shows they're used to happening all the time. So when they're the new show, I think you have to provide a lot of incentive, which there seem to be some some incentive. There is a lot of incentive. A lot of incentive for the show. I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But I think yeah, I don't know, man. Like even like the indie pro, that was that was like the same time, and you know they stopped doing yeah. that show because. It's just a weird time, I think, and uh, I think with 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 us as pro bodybuilders, like we have, we we basically have like this timeline in our mind of when we're going to be ready by, and I just don't think any of us had that in our sight. Yeah. You know, when, it, yeah, when but- you don't have anything else around it, like you, you you're going to have a string of shows: New York, Cali, Toronto. It's like one two weeks apart, right? Mm-hmm. And you got Vancouver, Chicago, Tampa, Texas. And then you got a whole run of shit in the in Europe, right? Uh, and it's all kind of bunched together like that. If you can hit three or four of those shows at the end of a prep, you're in shape. That makes sense to do. But this is awkwardly between the Arnold and the Arnold South America and the UK and the New York, and it's like just there, you know. So if they'd stuck it at a different weekend, maybe later in the year, closer to one mm-hmm. of these other shows, yeah, um, I think it probably would have uh, drawn more people. I. So this why, already, but I wish I'd done it. Fuck. <laughs> why wouldn't you just continue though? Yeah. If you did the Arnold America, Arnold UK, well, I guess everybody didn't do the Brazil, but why wouldn't you just die a couple more weeks? You know? I don't, yeah. I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know. We also okay, uh, what's his name? Uh Patrick Tour says something because I, I think Dennis James and Milos were saying the same thing, right? Because he, he you know, especially like Milos, he like do every show. But Patrick Tour is like, hold on, like you're speaking from your own body. Milos got in shape really easily. He can maintain that, that body fat really easily. You take Akeem on and then Akeem doing it. Motherfucker, if you knew what Akeem had to do to, to look like that, he might not be able to hold it on, on for two more weeks. He lit, he lit yeah. you know what I'm saying? He might not be able to. So I guess we can't assume that everybody can just do show to show to show and get better. Some people might look like shit, 
Some people, shit, some people might have to work. What if you can't even afford the, the shit? We don't know people's living situations. It's pretty for common, my, too, man. I mean, yeah. shit, no one's paying for you to, like, go Bro. to these shows. Unless you're winning money, you start to make up some of the difference. You know, it's Bro. not really worthwhile. When I, when I was in Vegas with Compton, you know, I'm with Compton and a bunch of other people, and I'm hearing all these stories about pros, and a lot of motherfuckers are broke, bro. Yeah. Like, you could never you can never tell. Just because you have a house or you have a nice car doesn't mean you have money, bro. You can be broke as fuck and have nothing in your bank account. So I think sometimes we think we think we know what's going on, but we might not know. There's probably a lot a lot of other reasons why these people aren't doing doing these these shows, you know. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, for my part, like I I'm probably not going to do Toronto. So you're dodging me, Robin. Um, just, <laughs> right, just because, like, money wise, it's like it doesn't make sense for me. Like, in for New York, I got friends to stay with over there. Only got to pay for the hotel for like two nights. California, same deal. I'm going to stay with my family in San Diego and then drive up to Anaheim. Easy. And then Toronto, I'm going to have to get a hotel for four or five days. That's at two hundred dollars a night. Buy all my food over there fly to canada it's like that's gonna turn into like a two to three thousand dollar trip maybe i win some money there maybe i don't you know uh, well I you just will don't. but i mean you you will I, and honestly bro i'd say you stay with us if we just if we had space i'd love to have you here but yeah you know i don't i don't, I don't know anybody up in canada well enough to ask him like hey could i crash on your couch you know i i don't want to ask that of people but like for Chicago, or the next run of shows, I got Vancouver. I can drive there easy. Uh, Chicago, I'm going to be staying with Jordan Hutchinson. We, we're going to be getting Airbnb together. Um, Tampa, I don't know if I'll do that. Texas, I could just sleep on my buddy Garrett's couch. Like it's, I, I'm trying to do this all on a budget, you know, yeah. uh, which is crazy to say on, in a professional sport. But that's how it is, man. You know, nobody. Well, no, you're hundred percent right. Yeah, you're hundred percent right. Because I, I have to have this discussion with my girl too. It's like, well, if I'm gonna choose to do like Japan Pro and like do all these U.S. <laughs> shows, it's like, and I expect her to come with me, and she has to spend that money too. It's like that's not gonna work, or or what? I'm just gonna do my whole season and not have her there. It's like you know, all these things have to play a role for sure. Yeah, it, it, like yeah, man. I, I'd love to do more and more international shows. Uh, guess I have to start winning some shows to make that happen, then, right? So, yeah, the thing is, like, if you have a sponsor who's just paying for all of your flights and hotels and your food, then fucking get after it, just expense yeah, the shit, you know. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I'm getting some coverage for my shows with my contract, but not yeah, all of them sure. by any means. Um, so I and mean, maybe if I was a better bodybuilder competitively, that would be different than have a better contract. But I mean, yeah, it's just most of us, you know, who aren't like top studs who are like favorites to win shows have to think about these things. You know, it's not yeah. a guarantee that you'll win money. It's not a guarantee that you'll have your way paid. So, and even with the increased prize money, which is great. Like we love seeing that it's still only for like the top two places this year. Uh, yeah. and some of the other shows have higher prize money as well, but like, that's going to draw bigger names too. And then like, if I try to do Dubai, I might be lucky to be in the top 10 there, you know, cause everyone's, everyone's going to that. A lot of big names. Um, yeah. So uh, it, maybe if we were better bodybuilders and, uh, Fuad would have invited us to Detroit and offered to pay our flight and accommodation. So yeah, <laughs> get better, get better and stop being so <laughs> mediocre then Stu. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm all yeah. over it, yeah. <laughs> I think, I think Stu is going to collect some prize money this year. I don't know how many shows. Of course he is, but, but you I can't, you can't like plan your financial year around. No, like, I'm yeah. planning on winning twenty thousand dollars this year. No, because you could win zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that'll put that that'll put you back at even, and then you can make money from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. 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 I gotta hop right. off in like five minutes, boys, because I got the Canadian beef. I wish I could stay. Oh yeah, yeah. Do you think, yo, uh, am, am I am I supposed to be on this week or no? We we never talked about that. No, you're good. You're good. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, you, you want to hop off now, or you want to do one more question? We we'll do one more question. All right. Yeah, let's do one more call. We're like two and a half in all. So. Yeah. Do you think I have the potential to be a great bodybuilder? No. Quit. Quit tomorrow. If you have to ask that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, 
if, if, if you want me to answer, like, if my answer is going to change what you're doing, if it does, then you should quit. So quit. I'm sorry. <laughs> you sound like me. <laughs> yeah, but because people ask that, it's like, what do you want me to say? If you want me to say yes or no, if that's going to affect whether you do it or not, then you don't really love it. And if you don't love it, don't do it, honestly, because you're not doing it for the money like we just talked about. So either you love it or you don't. If you love it, you do it. If you have to ask, don't do it. It's, it's like if, if I had, you know, the opportunity to ask like a pro bodybuilder, like one question, like, you know, before you could easily ask pro bodybuilders question, I'd probably think of a better question than do I have potential? You know, like, don't, sure. don't you think you could think yeah. of something better to ask? Like, I'm not trying to put it down at all. It's just the fact that that's not what you should be thinking about. Cause that's the one thing that you don't have any control over whatsoever. And we have no idea. So, I don't know. I feel like just a lose lose question, man. I don't think anybody yeah. would have looked at Nick Walker at 17 and said he has good potential as a bodybuilder. But everybody told him that he sucked and he should like fucking 100%. Yeah. Everybody said you suck. You'll never turn pro. Quit while you're ahead. Quit people while you're alive. Like, people told him to kill himself. They're like, nah, you suck so much. You should just be dead. It's like, that's how yeah. people fucking, that's the kind of answers you're going to get from people if you ask, do I have potential? You have to show your potential. That's your job as a fucking human being. <laughs> So, yeah, hell yeah, um, dude. That's yeah, let's, let's hell go. yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Last question. Uh, been cutting for forever. Post the show, cut body quick. Been cutting forever. Post show. <laughs> I don't know. Been cutting forever. Post show, cut body. Not okay. Post show, cut body. Not responding. How do I get it to respond again? So you do a show. Responding. And, what does that mean? You're trying to get leaner? Are you trying to grow? Burn out all his androgen receptors, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think this person did the show and now post show. The body's responding. He's, he's been I, dieting I we, so long he doesn't know how to form a sentence anymore. I think we should I think we should end the podcast now and give the listeners a chance to ask better questions for next time. <laughs> I'm all for that. Yeah. Oh man. All right. Uh, yeah. I don't, I don't. I don't got nothing worth worth covering. So this this is what you get. Free Nation podcast, the best in the world, baby. Love most it. dangerous, most dangerous podcast in the world. <laughs> I, I wish I, I wish I could stay in chat, boys, but I got to head off. I, I appreciate you guys having me on. Of course. Yeah, thank man. you. Yeah. All right, bro. Have a good all one, right. boys. Uh, okay. well, well st stay on YouTube. I'm, I'm gonna pause it. All, all right. right, all right, people, take care. Bye, guys. <laughs>